Hello everyone, welcome to the stream, to the very spontaneous stream, I should say. Welcome uh, Rosie, welcome uh, Valentine and uh, Michael Jordan is here too, awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome everyone, nice to see you here in chat and um, I hope you can hear me and the sound is good, that's always my biggest concern. Um, I decided to do a very <laughs> short, for my terms, uh, little news stream regarding the new images of uh, Gilgalad and that just came out a few hours ago and I thought yeah probably a good opportunity to just dive a bit into the law see what we can find out discuss a few details though I'm um, definitely very far uh, behind in many things so it's a very very also oh, Mark Sheath is also here welcome uh, yeah it's, it's a very spontaneous stream so I feel highly highly underprepared for this and as a result um yeah we already see one of the screenshots um which i like a lot where we see hiking gilgalat uh the hiking of the noldor elves with his spear that sh the famous spear of gilgalat is of course uh uh Eyegloss. interesting uh story is there are two ways of spelling it i think in some old versions um tolkien spelled it a i g l o s I also mis <laughs> misspelled, uh, mistyped it, uh, had a typo in my tweet, which is unfortunate. Um, and then in later versions, he r spells it with the um, with the a e diphthong, so a e g l o s. But yeah, very interesting. Nice to see some familiar faces here. Sound is good. Maybe I also listen for a moment in my own stream and see how it li uh, sounds. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Okay, <laughs> I hope you couldn't hear that. Else you just heard the stream um, two times for a moment, but it should not be the case. Very uh, nice. Finally caught one of your streams. Nice. Welcome, Steve Sadler. Nice to, that you could uh, make it. It was a very spontaneous stream. I, it was not scheduled. I just scheduled it like 20 minutes ago or something. No, a bit more than 20 minutes, but whatever. Sound is fine. Good, good to hear. Nice, nice. Yeah, and... Also, we can always start with the with the art of uh, Kimberly Eighty, who also has drawn Gilgalad, which is this man here, and um, it's one of my favorite artworks of Kimberly Eighty. We probably maybe use it or not, I'm not sure, but um, it's always good to get the shoutouts to the artists um, out of the way right at the start of the stream, and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. There's a lot of little details we might be able to discuss. Certainly, I can't. Uh, yeah, probably I don't have too much or too many new things to say, but still hope um, this might be uh, interesting for some of you people here. <laughs> you got 26 people already, yeah. 26 and maybe rising. As I said, it was really spontaneous. I maybe should have asked if somebody wanted to join the discussion or so, like a little collaboration. Not sure if somebody's off to, but might be hard to dis uh, <laughs> to organize this now on the fly because... Yeah, things. It's too, just simply too spontaneous. I was like, I didn't even uh, notice when the pictures were posted. I was um, doing voice recording for the next video, which I hope I can edit tomorrow and publish it. But I can, no promise. Probably it will be um, today is uh, Thursday. Then it should be Saturday, right? Yeah, Saturday maybe uh, it could release. I try to finish it tomorrow, but I'm not sure. Okay, so um, where do we start, chat? It's it's very complicated. So um, I don't know. The first thing I was looking at when I saw this um, this fantastic picture, yeah, maybe I, well, the format is probably good. Um, was looking at the at what was written on the picture. That was what <laughs> interested me um, most um, at first, and we discussed some of this already. So if you have seen all the all the others live streams, you pro probably don't have much. Or many new things to to tell, um, except for there is this spear eye gloss on the on the screenshot. I can already spoil. I can't read what is written on it. It's it's too um, small, and the resolution of the um, of the of the image is not high enough for me to be able to to read it. Sadly, also ask somebody else if he could read it. Oh, Tirza is also here. But um, yeah, it's. 
it's, it's of course a problem. So the pictures also for people interested, I have to admit, this is a very huge admitment I have to make. I had not the time to read the article yet. I started reading it, but now I'm already live and I'm, <laughs> I'm not finished with it, which is unfortunate. Um, but I will link it uh, in uh, chat, the article. I, even, I didn't even change the bot command, I think, for it. So this is the Nerdist article. Um, there the pictures were published first, I think, and of course we always always want to give shout outs to the ori original source of the images. Let me just check if I can also fix the bot command really quick on the fly, as you said. I had no I really basically no prep time. Uh source for the screenshot, yeah, that should be okay-ish, right? Maybe it works, maybe not. We will find out in a moment. And then we go to the question. Somebody, some people already asked some of uh, some questions here. Um, let me see if the command works. Um, we will uh, look into some of those. If you maybe you have to post it again, your question or whatever. Yeah, it seems to work. Notice com article. Okay, yeah, it seems to work. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's look into this um, screenshot thing here. Let me just maybe make this a bit smaller. Uh, yeah, let's look into um, this stuff here. Probably we have to switch a bit. Um, how could I do this, chat? It's always my biggest... Does this work? There is a feature in... No, I've already um, made uh, stuff for it. What is all of this here? It's just really strange. Um, I, I tried. I have to do production-wise some uh, stuff. Let me just. Oh, it's just too many things going on here at once. That's a bit overwhelming currently. I need to find a way out of how we can look at the at the at what is written on the stuff. So basically, one thing that is written on 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 the um, outfit on the, on his robes is already um, confirmed. Basically, from the uh, trailer screenshot stuff. Ah, uh, no, I don't find this the, the fitting scene here. Promise I can't, I think I can't capture this from here. It's a big problem. You won't see the image then when I do it like this. Huh. That I don't like. How could I do this better though? Uh, using OBS, I can, like, I know how to get it. The problem is um, that you don't see what... I want you to see if I do it like this. That is a bit unfortunate, I have to admit. I just don't, yeah, well, the only option I guess is to move this here, move this here and maybe bring this over differently. Maybe I can use the full, the full screen mode of Photoshop. Well, uh, maybe that works. What is my... Nope. Nope. Oh. <laughs> of course, we have a problem. Okay, that should work, I guess. Uh, I already prepared something in Photoshop when the, the image came out to make stuff more uh, readable. Um, I hope that kind of works. Let me just see how does zooming works again in this. Ah, that's how it works. So yeah, now we can zoom in a bit uh, on the fly. I hope stuff can be seen. Um, yeah, I'd already tried to um, put some of the stuff and look at what is written uh, on his clothes. So this is a kirs. This is translates to runes, and it's the old elven script that the dwarves later use. So, um, yeah, image works. Yeah, it should work, right? Don't think we need this image uh, thing here. Um, yeah, so w we can look at this. And if you have seen the uh, video I already uh, did a moment ago, um, we already um, have this. Well, I need now this. <laughs> Let me just see. So it, it's relatively hard to follow the lines, but 
this here is pretty clear to me. This one, the lower, I think it's called a, a sheesh. No, it, not, what is it called? A sash. <laughs> sheesh is wrong. Um, a, a sash. Um, if you, um, I try to just um, with with my with my pencil tool here, just draw the line so you can see better what is written on it. And it's a kirs. And if you translate it or just look what val what values these these letters um, have. Um, you can read that this here is an A, this here is an N. The dot means basically space, um, so new word. And then you have an E, an I, an N, another I. Um, this is the O, and this is a, this is the R. So if here it's it's a bit unclear, but it also looks like an R. With this, the most likely thing that it can only be one thing, and that is. Um, I'm not actually sure how it's pronounced. I think it's Aran Einjor. I think this I here is not a vowel here. It's just um, basically um, the Y. I think I pronounced this wrong in the past. But recently I got an interesting comment on YouTube and then I looked into the pronunciation rules again. I think the I is then not a um, not a, its own vowel, but um, basically just an English Y, U or whatever. And um, Aran Einjor would mean um, Elder King, which of course stands for, um, um, for let me just do production really good fast in the background, uh, which of course stands for Manwe. And um, we also have a beautiful artwork of Kimberly 80 for, for Manwe. Um, we discussed this, like I said, already in a previous stream. That is um, the, the Valar, um, the leader of the Valar. And... Um, Is yeah, basically I don't know. You can compare it to Zeus or whatever. It's it's is like like the Vardar form a god pantheon. They are basically something like angels. There's only one cre um, almighty god in um, in Lord of the Rings universe, so they are technically not gods, even though some might call them um, this. And yeah, this is what he has here, and this is very very fitting because if I now find my production thing here where I have where is it it's all the way down here if we go back to this we also have his sleeves and um, this is not new we already knew this from the um, trailer screenshot if we now look at the um, sleeve we can um, read an L a B and an N and on the other screenshot you can see that here's another E so uh, E L B E and it's very clear that or very likely that the name on it means um, Elbares, and Elbares is the wife of uh, Manwe, which we just um, showed there a moment ago. And let me just see, where did I... There's also a Kimberly 80 um, artwork um, of her. And yeah, this is uh, Elbares Gilthoniel, or it is a Sindari name. In um, in Quenya she's called Varda, and um, she is the queen of the stars and the wife of the basically king of the Valar, the king of the world. And um, yeah, she's the queen of the world as a result, you could say. And this is written on his sleeves, which is very interesting that we have now really, the, we can now re read it pretty clearly that this is um, Aran Einjor um, on his, uh, on his uh, um, sash and on his sleeves we have Elbares. The question now is, and this I sadly could not find out. Hello from Italy. Welcome, Ivy. Nice to see you. Um, what's quite interesting is what is written here. Like, I sadly had not the time to look too deep into it, but I can tell I'm pretty sure that this here is an N and this might be an E. I'm also pretty sure that this here is the R and this here is the N. I'm not sure about what this is and what this is. Like this could be an A, this could also be an A, really hard to say. Arna or something, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if here's a little dot or so, like here, so this is a new word. No idea. Maybe this is also um, uh, an A or something. Uh, no, it's not an A, it can, why, why did I write A here? It doesn't look like an A, it should be an E. So it's um, pretty uh, hard to to say. Let me just see. Yeah, yeah that should be. Uh, it could. Uh, it looks more like an. Uh, not like an A. More looks. It looks more like an uh, A. So it's really 
complicated. Um, to, to, I'm not sure if anybody of you have, have like a really good idea for what could this mean. Like I said, the only letters I'm 100% sure is like if we remove this here again and look into it, like you see, this looks basically li like a K. Yeah, if I just activate it, see, basically looks like a K. And this here is basically like a T just with this angle here. Even though this looks like it's very close to it, I'm not sure. But for me, it looks like definitely like the uh, letter for the N. I'm definitely um, uh, not sure what it means, though, Chad. Like I said, and this here, it's really, really tough to see. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what this here is. Like, it could go on like something, and then it would be like also an A or so. I'm not sure. This here, it could be an I, and this is something new. It could be part of this letter. It could be an, it could be an A. It doesn't look like, I don't know. Really hard to say. I would after R uh, before R and N. I would expect a vowel though. So really hard to say. In case anybody in chat says, yeah, I can read this. It is that just feel free to 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 um, tell. Yeah, none of Gilgalad's names have an R N in, in it. I also looked um, like we already have um, um, like the Valar names. The question is, who else could he have written? Which other name could he have written on his on his clothes? Like this is um, the this a Sindari name for Elder King, so for Manwe. This is Elberes Gilsoniel, so this is um, uh, for for Varda. So it's not his own names are written on his clothes. Right runes uh, on an elf. And that's a very good question that you ask. It has to do. We also I also have a great image of it. So it depends. I guess it depends on the version though. But there is um, an elf named Dairon. Let me see if I find him really quick. <laughs> that's also an artwork by Kimberly eighty, and um, Dairon um, is from Dorias, so where uh, Thingol was king. And he invented a, a writing system called Kirs. And this is what we see here. Interestingly, the um, Dorias had very good relationships, re very good relationship to the dwarves. Maybe for people wondering where that is, can pull up my first age map. So Dorias is here. There's also Minegros there. And um, the dwarves had a very good relationship to the, uh, the elves had a very good relationship to the um, dwarves, for example, in Belegost and uh, Norgrod, which is here in the Blue Mountains. This part here where Beleriand, um, you can read on the screen, that was the old west coast of Middle-earth. Later here where Belegost and Norgrod is, basically there's, uh, west of it there's ocean all of a sudden, because the other stuff was sunk into the ocean. However, um, the dwarves came to Minegros, um, the basically yeah, capital or the the royal house, the palace, uh, what do you call the castle, <laughs> the castle um, of uh, Thingol, and they had a really good relationship. And they saw these runes here, the Kirs runes, and thought, okay, these runes, as you can see here, um, oh, you can't see it, right? As you can see on this screen, you can, um, you can, if if you would use what do you call it, a hammer and this other thing, you can, uh, you can put them into stone. I don't know the exact English word for it currently, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, you can put them into, you can write them into stone very well. In contrast, if we would look, let me just see if I can find the uh, one ring screenshot somewhere. Uh, for example, Tengwar, the other elven writing system, um, is has very fine lines. So it's very difficult to carve into stone. Carve is a word. <laughs> now I said it by accident right. Um, one ring. Let me just see if I find a good image of that. My computer has a weird issue when I search something. It always never memorizes my standard setting for it. Whatever. It's not a big problem. One ring. Yeah, that's a famous thing where Frodo holds it when it comes out of the fire. Um, let me just bring up the production really fast. 
Yeah, so um, here you see these, these, this is Tengwar, the other elvish writing system. And it's really hard to put into stone because of all these fine lines. Like, you need to be far more advanced to carve this into metal and stone than just um, uh, these letters here. And so the basic the reason why we see Kirs here on, um, on, on Gilgalat is that it is actually elven runes originally. The dwarves adopted them and then they became over time known as dwarf runes. But um, actually it's in its origin an elven writing, an elvish writing system. That's basically um, yeah, the uh, answer uh, to this question. It's in origin an elvish system and this is a bit unusual in a way that we see it here on, um, on, Gil uh, on Gilgalat. The reason for that is that... <laughs> okay, I did terrible things. Didn't I click on this here? I did. Um, yeah, the reason for this is it's a bit unusual because um, Gilgalat is at Noldor and the Tengwar writing system, as we see, for example, on the One Ring, Sauron used it as well to write black speech with it. Um, it is an, a system that was invented by, most likely by Noldor, by Feanor, which I also have an artwork somewhere. Let me just see if I can pull it up really quick. Definitely bring my production, well, uh, production skill here to the absolute limit, I feel. Let me just see, where do we have here? Yeah, we take this um, thing here. It's not by Kimberly 80 this time, it's by Jenny Dolphin. This one here. Um, yeah, Feanor, um, one of the most powerful uh, powerful and famous um, elves um, in existence and in the Legendarian. Also, well, not a very nice elf one, would some people say. And um, yeah, he invented it. And basically, um, Gilgalad over many corners is somewhat related to him, though, yeah, let's say the half-brother of um, Feanor is like a great-great-great-grandfather of, of Gilgalad, depending on where you put him in the family tree. But however, he's in Uldor, so it seems strange that Kyrs is written on him. However, when the elves from uh, Aman came to Middle-earth, oh no, it gets really complicated, let me just see, that's a second age map, now I have to find... Oh, that works. Uh, came to from... Um, so the Noldor, at least after at some point in, in history, the Noldor lived in Amman and came back to Middle-earth. Because the Silmarilli was stolen. You know the story, it's complicated. But, um, however, when they came here, there were already elves there, for example, in Dorias. And um, when there was also this king's uh, kin slaying incident in Amman, and uh, when um, in Dorias, King Thing Thingol found out about it, he um, he was, let's say, not amused, and basically um, banned the, Nol uh, the language of the um, of the of the Noldor and so on. That is the reason why, even though the Noldor elves are Noldor and would in tradition speak Noldorin Quenya, speak Sindarin, because Thingol was a Sindar elf, the king living here in Doriath. And, uh, well, and um, as a result, um, even later in, in, in the world, even Elrond and Galadriel and all the others, when they communicate or converse in, in the world, they still use Sindarin and the language of the Sindar elves, even though they themselves are not Sindar, but uh, Noldor elves or Nold yeah, Noldor elves. And I could assume, like, this is just my assumption, that this might be the reason that it also comes a little bit down to the writing system of the, um, of the elves, um, that they also use the traditional Sindar writing system, which is um, Kyrs and not um, Tengwar. So that's unusual. However, of course, on this thing here, it's really hard to see. Like, if I zoom in quite a bit, that's uh, probably a bit too too zoomed in. This is how it works. 
it's really hard to see, but um, some letters here on this look look Tengwar. So this looks like actually Tengwar, which is a different writing system, as we find it on the one ring. Like you see the lines are much less blocky and far more, like they, there's some, some there are finer lines that also swing around, you know what I mean. But I, sadly, it's my, my reading of Tengwar is not very good. And it's too not sharp enough and too pixely to read it, sadly. But um, I hope this answers um, the, the question. Is there a uh, kill switch? Is there just a joint? Um, is there a too long didn't read or didn't watch um, where we are right now? Couldn't we just discussing um, what is written on his clothes? And I give like an explanation why it's written in Kirs and not in Tengwar. Yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting uh, point. Somebody uh, just wrote in chat um, that um, the spear Aegloss, um looks less like a spear, uh, and maybe somebody also at the beginning of the chat wrote it looks like a naginata, which is like a Japanese um, weapon. Though I guess it is basically a spear with like a blade attached to it. So it's not a classic spear, but it is kind of a spear. So I don't mind too much. You could use this thing as spear. It's also just interestingly um, this full metal block. I kind of like it, I have to say. I'm very curious though what is written on it. Like this is what <laughs> interests me most almost. Oh, that was a bit too much zoomed in. But you see these lines going here, here and you have these diacritics here on top. That's um, a good indicator for it being... Um, it's definitely Tengwar, but... I said I sadly can't read it. It's too pixely. Very unfortunate. So yeah, this is that. This we we can also since we have quite a lot of viewers currently here um, in chat. Maybe somebody are very good at little riddles. So I can. This here means um, Aran Einjor or Einjor, um, which means Elder King. This uh, on this. Sash. I always have to think for what the word for Sherpe in German is. <laughs> Sash. Um, the question is, what is on the um, on the sash below? The only the only letters I can really read are um, are the um, letter R. It looks like a K. This is what looks oh distantly like a T is an N, and the rest. And here on the other side, this is very likely an I can maybe remove it again. That's the wrong one. That was also the wrong one. Like if if you zoom in quite a lot, you see this is also like a T. So this must be an N in my opinion. This here, I'm also pretty sure it's just um, a line. So it would be an I. So it's um, N E. I'm not sure what words you can form out of this. Like um, Arna or something exists, I think, as a word. So it can mean something like royal or so, but not sure um, what this means. I'm not sure. This is cut off. This here, I'm also not sure if it's like... I would expect a vowel here and a vowel in front of these two letters, but I could be wrong. So it could be either an I, even though it doesn't really look like an I, I have to admit. This here, as said, looks a bit like it is also this T. You see? And this definitely is a K. I'm pretty sure about that. Not that many letters that look like this, even though this here looks a bit strange, but it could be just a shadow or so. It's really hard to, to read. So if somebody has like a really good idea um what is what is written there, um in my opinion it looks something like this, but I'm not sure. Also, this here would I think more more be an E. Maybe it says Niena or something like this, but I have no. Maybe on on the maybe on these sheets they go around him and there's um, the names of all the Valar on it or something, or at least some of them. Really hard to say. However, Niena should be the uh, Quenya name, right? So let me just. I have to um, move back a bit because uh, yeah, when I have to do. Reading stuff, you have to be careful what's on the screen and whatnot. I'm a huge fan of going to monitor capture simply. Um, 
yeah, um, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody in chat has like a really good idea what um, is written on it, but this stuff is usually what interests me most. Maybe somebody can post a summary of what's written in the article because I had <laughs> literally no time to completely read it. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to check, uh, I wanted to look up the, the name, right? Nienna should be a Quenya name. It would be unusual if all the other names, um, yeah, it's Quenya means tear. Not sure what it means. Is there an, somebody knows a Sindari name for her? Let me just see. Quenya, Quenya. Is this is Sindari? Nienna? Book of Lost Tales is a source for that. Really hard to say. Oh, that's my problem here. I know, I'm not sure what um, the Sindari name is. I need a new phone now. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Hmm. It must be a very similar name in Sindarin because um, Nin is a tear in uh, in um, like we have Ninyel, which should be um, uh, Sindarin, and it also has this part. Like uh, Ninyel means tear maiden, that is the sister of uh, Turin. Spoiler. Maybe there is no Sindarin form for her yet. I'm not sure, Chad. But um, I just I really just try to figure out what might be written here. He's pretty blingy for sure. Yeah, that's maybe another thing we maybe could discuss for a short moment. Oh, and I think um, this was lost in the chat, but um, any chance the R and the N means... Um, Rex in Noldorin. Could like I said the um it it depends um it depends a little bit on um let me just switch back. It depends a little bit on um like it it could be something like this because um there are let me just check the word. So, let me see, oh no, now I have to switch this back. Oh, it's complicated, chat. Uh, so, for example, um, the word Arn means royal. So, there could be something to it, like that um, there's some weird form I'm not aware of, um, w where this might be uh, the case. So, there are multiple um, forms where, where this could kind of fit. Like we have the um, word, um, for example, ar, um, we, we find it in, in a lot of um, in a lot of words, for example, in Arno or Arthedain or something. We have these AR, for example, you you find, you can for, for sure create a form following that where an, M, an, an N comes next. So yeah, maybe something, um, like this. The question is though, yeah, what it means. I just tried to find a good form though. It doesn't really look like it. So um, yeah, maybe, I'm not sure if anybody has, like I said, a really good suggestion, let me know in chat though. I most likely will miss it. Let 
Let me just... No, no it works. I wasn't clicked. I had to find out how it is. As said, um, yeah, in general, the style, if we look at the um, complete picture, um, forgot what the exact name of this is, but let's call it his crown. Um, looks very Roman in a way, and he looks very golden. And um, I already posted it, like, um, we discussed it uh, in, in previous um, streams. Well, let me just use uh, maybe the other thing here. So we get a, a better uh, impression. I said exclamation mark source in chat if you want to know where stuff is. So if you want to read the article and where the uh, pictures are from. Um, yeah, he looks very golden. And if we look, for example, at... Um, oh, no, I have not opened it anymore. That is... Oh, can bring it back, though, so pretty fast. So there is a note in the Unfinished Tales... Um, And uh, in, in the Unfinished Tales, there's a note about him. And we also have the poem from the Lord of the Rings. And he always, his name mean, means radiance, um, uh, me, means a, a star of radiance. You could maybe also maybe translated with starlight or something in this direction. He always gave me a very silver impression. And on these pictures, he's now relatively golden, which I found unusual. However, we um, come to that in a moment. How this um, might be um, fitting, chat. Laurels is the name. Look, Roman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he doesn't have pants, which is kind of wrong. <laughs> it depends. Um, yeah. Let me just see if I find it. How, what is... Uh... So there's the poem that um, our friend Samwise... Um, uh, quotes and um, yeah if we read it um, if we read this poem it says it is kind of interesting that um, in the poem we can read of a sword which we don't know about and a lens which I assume is a spear even though a lens and a spear is not the same but I assume it might be the po a poetic way of describing it um, his sword was long his lens was keen his shining helm afar was seen. The countless stars of heaven's field were mirrored in his silver shield. So the silver shield and the reflection going on gives always, and his, his name means radiance of stars, and if you look at starlight, they usually have this more colder light, this moonlight, and this is further reflected um, by a passage from um, the Unfinished Tales, note like it's in the um, section of Aldarion and Erendis and um, there is a note 25 um, we, we find a bit. It is recorded that um, Erenion, that is the name of Gilgalad, uh, was given the name Gilgalad Star of Radiance and now comes the reason why this name was given to him because his helm and mail and his shield overlaid with silver and set with a device of white stars, shone from afar like a star in sunlight or moonlight, and could be seen by elvish eyes at a great distance if he stood upon a height. So, um, it's kind of interesting, um, in a way, um, that he got his name because of, let's say, his shining capabilities. So, I guess it kind of makes sense to make his out to give him an outfit in the show that um distantly reflects this and um it also says shown from afar like a star in sunlight or moonlight so i guess the 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 color of the sun is more golden the color of the moon is more silver if that makes sense so maybe this is um this is references it distantly we also see like, I don't know, at least on uh, my screen, some of the images, like, it looks a little bit more silver, like um, his... Let me just bring back my uh, monitor here. Um, yeah, like, um, this is part here, for example, what he wears beneath his uh, cape. Looks a bit more silver to me, so I guess it kind of works. Maybe it has to do... 
that he's more golden because the sun is now shining and he reflects the golden light. It doesn't really look like it. It really looks like his robes are golden, but um, still, I would have preferred if he would look a bit more silver. Interestingly, but the show um, can't know this, um, Gigalot had silver hair. We know this from um, the nature of Middle-earth. But um, I assume they it wasn't published, I guess, when they designed the costumes and so on. So, um, and made, filmed the show and so on. It, it came out last year in September, so probably um, too far into production. I can, I can find the um, exact quote, but probably will be, it might be pretty hard to find really quick. Mm. Oh, I skipped it, I guess. Staff Radiance given to uh, King Wine, the last I can remember. Silver Hand, uh uh. Here we have, like, I can. Uh, there's a section called Hair in um, the Nature of Middle Earth book by um, Mr. Hofstet uh, Hofstetter. And. Um, it um, basically talks about a few things. Um, base null shine glitter always with reference to reflected radiance from a bright surface, as in the name Gil Galat, Star of Radiance, given to Finwine, last High King of the Eldar, because for, uh, of the radiance of his silver hair, armor, and shield that. It is said could even in the moonlight be seen from many leagues afar. The same word occurs in the name Galadriel, kinswoman of Finwine, lady of the radiant crown, referring to um, the shining of her golden hair. So, yeah, you can, like, it seems if we look at the um, word um, itself, it, it becomes somewhat clear that... Um, it can be both, like Galadriel's... Um, hair was had like she had golden hair, though there was also silver in it. But it it also had this, it also qualified for for this radiance. Um, though on Gilgalad we have the explicit statement that it is related to stars. As a result, it um, yeah, it's it's quite interesting uh, in in this context. But I guess depending on what was shining at him, he reflected basically what was. Um, the current mood. However, in the trailer footage, we had a scene at night, then there he should be more silver, but there he was also more golden. But maybe they play a bit that he becomes less golden at night and more golden at day or so. Really hard to say, but I, I, would, I would appreciate if they would do something like this. It seems like it would be a pretty cool concept. Not sure if they are really fully going with this, though. Hairgate. <laughs> Yeah, also somebody asked with the hair. Like here also has uh, long hair. And as I said, this text that I just read was published September 2021, so last year. Nobody knew. Um, like it was always, like there were theories that um, Gilgalad had, um, had silver hair, but um, it was never confirmed or mentioned everyone, everywhere. So I can't blame the makers for not giving him um, hair. And according to his family tree, well... <laughs> That's really complicated for him. Let's say darkish hair is okay in this case, in my opinion, but um, yeah. It was always speculated that he might have um, silver hair, I guess. Also, sorry for looking at chat. Um, it's a good question. Um, let me just see who asked the question, though. Um, Kanto23 asked, um, his hair was dark in the Fellowship of the Ring as well, no? Yes, I think you are right. I mean, me, I have a screenshot of this. I can try to find it really quick. Um, from the prologue, where we see him very shortly, I think he also looks somewhat distantly similar. I'm not sure if I have a really good screenshot, though, of him, but try my best to find it. That's a bit cut off. Nah. Well, it's better than nothing, I guess, but it's probably hard to see. But yeah, it looks also not silver here. 
this I can we I guess we can agree on. This is from the uh, prologue. That's another one which I could try to find. Everything complicated here. Not even sure what uh, see the right picture. Okay. Um. Okay, this doesn't help me at all because this is just his banner. I just got baited by my own weird naming here. Hmm. And we have like this image. Well, I have it like that. It's a bit unfortunate, but yeah, it looks somewhat distantly similar, I would say. Um... Yeah, it's a it's a couple of months. Like uh, September the second, the show comes out, so we will um, then know how how that is. We also somebody asked about the length of the hair. So that if I, I sadly forgot where it is written again, but um, there was like um, a post somewhere, I think on Reddit or so, where somebody discussed um, the sources for long hair, and it was I was kind of surprised that there is actually. Um, so what? Oh, Nolarine's here. I think uh, Gilgard looks uh, well done and uncanny to the actor in the Fellowship. <laughs> 9 out of 10. Yeah, we can. Let me just try to switch back and forth. Like, for me, it kind of works. Like, if the, if, if Gilgard was okay in Peter Jackson's film, I, I, I would argue this guy also gets a pass for... Um... Get get the pass for for the show. So overall, I have to admit it's kind of neat. I like like I don't know why I, I kind of like his spear. I can definitely see why people might not like it, but um, from my perspective, pretty cool. The orc also orcs also look good. Caladriel, in my opinion, also kind of works. The question will be <laughs> what they will do with her and her story. Like that is my biggest concern. So far, like some of the rumors that were recently published were also Salvador's here. Um, hello everyone, Gigalot looks amazing. Yeah, I think looks uh, pretty pretty neat. Can't complain about that. Curse you, Peter Jackson, and your golden elves. <laughs> Yeah, um, that works uh, pretty well. Not sure. Like there were a lot of questions um, at the beginning. Like I don't know. Um, most most Gilgalad action is in the Second Age. So I made the Second Age video, which is two hours and forty seven minutes or so, covering the Second Age from Elrond's perspective. There's also a lot of Gilgalad in it. Overall, Gelgalad is a character I personally, or a side character king, I like a lot. He, he reigned for quite a long time. And um, what is interesting about him is he really seems to be quite wise in what he's doing. For example, very early we can read um, uh, in, the, in the Unfinished Tales that he wrote a letter to Numenor and basically um, tried to establish an alliance with them and warning them of that somewhere in the distant east there's like a dark power where he means Sauron with it and um, or is it in the Silmarillion? I'm not sure. Um, one one of those and then he asked already for help and for alliance and to prepare for it. So he was well prepared when um, Sauron came along long before he was even there like, I don't know a couple of hundred years. I think he wrote it round about um, the year 800 and I think when Sauron turned or when Sauron popped up the first time it was around about 1200 so around about 400 years before Sauron 
was um, starting making moves, um, he already was prepared and tried to um, ask uh, Numinor for help and so on. It's, it's interesting if you look at this from the perspective of um, of, of Gilgalad. He's of course um, an elf, and elves usually, for example, like trees. And the um, Numenorians had a very great uh, desire for 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 wood. And so they came to Middle Earth, and basically they, he asked, they started making more settlements in Middle Earth, and this led to um, to, to problems. Let's see, local conflicts with um, the people who lived there first. For example, the ancestors of the um, Dune landings, and they were pushed back by the Numenorians, which um, is quite unfortunate for them. But um, yeah, he had to basically make okay. I could get overrun by Sauron, or I try to get um, on good terms with the Numenorians. And when Sauron comes with his big army, um, I'm prepared. And that is exactly what he did. So very curious how they will portray them in the show. It's kind of, um, in my opinion, it's a very um, interesting character that you can flesh out like a lot. And I don't know, he seems like a pretty um, smart elf when it uh, comes to ruling. And there are even poems about him, so I guess... People kind of liked him, else they would not have written the poems about him, I guess. But, yeah, it's um, interesting. Yeah, Gilgalad had a very good um, relationship with Aldarion. Um, I guess it depends on how, um, how you see this, but yeah. Think of the Romans. Uh, <laughs> time for pizza. So Aldarion, um, yeah, later became also king in uh, in Númenor, and um, yeah, he was like on the ship. He was traveling, he, he liked sailing a lot, and this led to like conflicts with his wife. And um, it's in this regard very interesting that um, yeah, that there's like a, whole, a very big dynamic to to this in this in this um, time zone in this story from that is published in the Unfinished Tales. But yeah, they had a good relationship and established, like, uh, the Numenorians. Let me just get my second age map back. It's a timeline map. Arda second age. That should be here. So in the second age, there was this island called Numenor, where um, the Dunedain, the men of the west, dwelled on. And um, when they initially got to this island, they were brought there by the elves. And then later... Um, it took them around about, I think, 600 years until they were able to return to Middle-earth again. And, um, yeah, then they sailed from Middle-earth um, to Miss Lond and established, like, um, first contact there with the elves again. And um, it may be possible that they exchanged uh, some some information and so on there uh, before, like, that the elves traveled. We know that the elves of, um, of Tol um, Eresia... Uh, this is this island in Amman, also sa sailed to Numinor and back, the Teleri there. That's how the Numinorians got, for example, the uh, Palantir, uh, the Palantiri um, and the White Tree that were gifts from um, from those. We can also read that when, uh, was it when um, Aldarion and Erendis married uh, in Numinor, that also elves came there and attended there. It's not clear where those elves came guest came from, maybe from um, uh, from Tol Eresia, but also maybe from um, from 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 Middle Earth, and yeah, it's definitely impossible. Do you think the thinking of Numinor will be um, the mid-season climax? It's really hard to say where they are going for it. Like they want to make multiple seasons, if I understand. The question is, would they? only cover the second age or would they also expand to the third age because like I would say the thinking of Numinor is a really really big plot point in the second age so I could imagine that it maybe takes even two seasons or three or whatever to to get to this point let's say two or so maybe though you are right the question is what comes next after Numinor is gone we have the conflict of um Basically, the, the conflict of the last alliance is next, if I'm not completely mistaken. Like, where well, is the foundation of Gondor and Arnor as a little step in between, and then next is um, the war of the last alliance already. So, 
I'm not sure how fast um, they are going there. Let me just pull up the last alliance. The famous, I used it a lot in my videos. It's one of my favorite screenshots and I will never forget sitting in the cinema back in the day. Seeing this scene was kind of cool, I have to admit. Really famous scene from the prologue. Yeah, I heard somewhere, does somebody know exactly how many seasons they planned? Was it three or five or something like this, right? I'm not sure. So if they only cover the second age, going for five seasons, I would expect that maybe if they go chronological, the, la the, last, uh, the War of the Last Alliance should be at the very end or something. <laughs> I love my German accent. No, that's true. The uh, Minorian females, at least <laughs> Erendis, didn't like the sea much. But yeah, I think there are not many notions of Tolkien of um, women of Num Numenor traveling on the sea much. I'm not sure. Five seasons uh, each of. Five, I think. Yeah, it's also what I heard. Like five seasons or something ridiculous like this. I'm not sure where they are going. Like what are they going to do? Five seasons in in, in, in the second age. I'm very unsure. Like if they go chronological, they would start with the time of foundation where Eregion is founded and so on. And Numenor is founded in parallel and things slowly happen very early in the second age. Then they would potentially jump to um, the first conflict, like um, Gilgalad, we have in here somewhere, um, uh, writes his letter to to Númenor, asks for help, then Númenor starts settlements, and we have local conflicts with the ancestors of the Dune Landings. Also, somebody wrote about the Dune Landings here in chat. I forgot what he wrote, though. But I said, I'm really bad at doing production, talking and reading chat at the same time. That's definitely too much for my multitasking ability. Um, however, yeah, that would be like a local conflict. He has a lot of wood is destroyed in, in Middle-earth at this time. Let me just see. I have a second age map from, from Amazon as well. And here you see that, at least it's somewhat indicated, that um, there's a lot of, if you look at this, there's a lot of wood here already, though there should be maybe more wood. And um, it's basically a giant forest that goes from, I don't know, from from maybe Rivendell, which would be here. Uh, all the, It's not there yet, it's founded in the Second Age, but goes down to Fangorn almost. So um, there's an implication in the Council of Elrond about this little detail. But yeah, it's it's really fascinating um, that like a lot of nature was sacrificed for this uh, for this alliance with with Numenor. So that that could be a plot point. Then the we have Eregion and the whole Rings of Power plot point in the Second Age, and then I don't know. We slowly have like inner inner political conflicts in Numenor, and then we have the fall of Numenor and then we have the last alliance. I'm not sure if I forgot anything. We might have like a little bit stuff happening in between here and there. For example, Sauron has to give the rings of power at some point, but these would be, oh no, the bots are here again. Yeah, the spam bots is always fascinating. It was last stream it was really bad with the spam bots. Not sure what's happening here. Yeah, I already deleted them. Uh, I hope. 
Let me just do um, a little spam protection in the background um, while I'm talking. Yeah, but these are the um, basic plot points that uh, I would expect in the second age. And you could definitely make this into five seasons, I guess. But if we would, um, if we would go kind of um, third age, then you would have more options. It feels like strange that the show is called Rings of Power and the Rings of Power are just forged in season two or something. You know what I mean? It's pretty strange. Yeah, the fall of each uh, ring bearer into a ring race would be pretty cool. Yeah, there, Of course, then we are very fast in the realm of fan fiction because of, of stuff made up because Tolkien never tells us who has a ring and who not. We only know that the um, three of them were Numenorians, that we know one potentially was an Easterling maybe, and the others could also be Numenorians or also Easterlings, it's, it's unclear. There's an interesting statement of Faramir um, uh, in the chapter The Forbidden Pool about, um, about this, but the, the question is of course how does Faramir know? <laughs> Yeah, it's a spear, it's named uh, Eyegloss. Um, let me just switch back to the picture because we are talking about this. Okay, can you can zoom a bit. So yeah, this is the um, spear that he has. It's, it's made out, out of one piece of metal, it looks. That makes any sense. How do I zoom again? Like this. Uh, one piece of metal and... Um, Something's written on it, I can't read it. I can only read what's written here on this part. I'm not sure what's written here, as said. And in the poems we also know he has a sword and a shield. And it's silver. Same with his mail. So it looks a bit off to be honest, but I'm not sure um, what they will be doing in the, in the show when everything is finalized. Like I said, it would be pretty cool if he would basically change colors in the evening. Um, he would look um, more silver-like. Oh, that's wrong. And there's also a second image um, of him. Let me see if I can find this really quick, but take will take a moment. I can promise that already. And yeah, this is the uh, second image we have of him. Here it looks again a bit more gold, but you definitely see that the the robes he wears below his cape, let's call it, um, is definitely more... How to put it? It, it, it definitely looks less uh, silver, if that makes sense. We just zoom in a bit like the the outer part looks very golden but the inner part now looks much more silver if that makes sense so maybe it really there's maybe definitely potential for for this to change depending on the daytime or so really uh hard to say this looks quite young on this picture in a way so they definitely did some um did some uh, work there digitally I feel uh, quite interesting. Just ignore the arrow here. This is the other picture. We also still see maybe on this picture. Well, I haven't. We haven't. I haven't tried this to be honest. Like there's of course a second picture um, in all of this um, trouble, and maybe we can read the stuff a little bit better on the um, on this one. I haven't tried, to be honest. Let me just see how this might work. Like I said, doing production live, and I sadly had not the time yet to really, to really put in a lot of uh, preparation time here. 
Oh, there it is. I have to admit, I'm. Wait, I can switch the view again. We'll bring it here up. Let me just create. Oh, no, it works. A new layer. So, as said, this here is definitely. Uh, this this letter that looks a bit like a K. I'm not I'm definitely a bit maybe I read this wrong. Maybe this here is not a T, but maybe uh this is like an N. And like the, the shape of an N, which would be an A. If I'm not completely mistaken. Always have to look at my very smart uh, thing here in the background. Yeah, an A. And the other letter, as said, is an R, so it would be read Ra, <laughs> Ra, <laughs> something like this. Here on this side, though, I'm pretty sure what it is. Like if we, uh, like this definitely is the weird T letter, which is like, um, as said, not an T, but an, uh, uh, but an N. And this here, I'm not sure. Oops, we have to hit this spot from this angle here with my just with my mouse. And here, this other part, I, I simply can't read. It's too too three really unfortunate. So it doesn't really help us uh, too much there. So if we go back here, I'm not sure. Like this here, another option for this letter could definitely be. Like it could be, wait, where is it? No, that's the right one. It could be this letter too, but that would be, um, uh, that would be like a Q, like Q, 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 I don't know. Also a possibility. However, it looks like here is the end of it and this is a new letter. So it could be either an I, it could be, it could be a, an E, it could be an A. O wouldn't work. U wouldn't work. It could be a Y. It would also be a possibility. It could be an I. But yeah, I don't know. Pretty, pretty hard to say what these letters are, sadly. Also, now I don't have my chat. Where's chat? There it is. I'm not sure if it will have the um, Jackson's attention to detail. I'm very curious about this too. So far, I have to say though that um, stuff like this, where you can sit in a stream and just, um, if we move back here, try to read everything on the close. So far, I like this attention to detail. Like they're definitely pulling some interesting language stuff up already. Like it's, it's kind of fun having like closes, royal closes, and having like Elberis written on the sleeves and. Um, Aran Einjor on the on the sash. Sadly, I can't read what is below. Like I was, I was so curious what the other thing here would say, but sadly can't really read it. <laughs> Did feel good. Oh, nice, Kirdan is there. Maybe you could find something out in the meantime, but probably you're also busy. But uh, welcome, Kirdan. Nice to see you. Maybe because you also have a um, vast language and writing knowledge. I'm not sure, um, Kirdan, if, if you are still there. Like, I guess we could agree. Wait, you can't see what I'm doing here. Um, we probably would kind of agree that this here is an is an uh, is an R, right? Well, we also have the writings here. So that's basically what I assume. I'm not sure about the the last letter here, what this could be. 
I'm really, really curious. I could also... This here definitely looks like an N. I no idea what this is. Maybe an E or something. Really hard to say. I guess it could be an O in theory as well. Excelion, Excelion of the Fountain is also here. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it's always, it's always sometimes really funny if you make these Lord of the Rings lore streams and you see all the, like you have Bilbo Baggins in chat and um, Exelion and I don't know um, who else. Uh, pretty funny. A lot of Lord of Rings uh, to see a lot of Lord of Rings name uh, names in chat. But yeah, um, this is the stuff here. And Elbert is on the sleeve. Like, there are definitely details they put in. Like, there, somebody, like, if we <laughs> just jump back here, somebody had to write this here on this, on this weapon, on, on Eyegloss. I said, it, it's definitely Tengwar, but I can't, it's too pixely to read, sadly. I would, like, having these pictures in a much higher resolution would be, would be so awesome. Sadly, uh, we don't get this. And, uh, But yeah, it's it's really unfortunate. But definitely there is some detail. We also looked, if you remember this um, other stream, um, we looked definitely for quite some time in the um, in the um, dwarven script in the background. That is also a possibility, definitely. I mean, we had this interestingly of like um, a deja vu. Like if we look at this here um, again, like we could switch this a bit on the fly. Like let's pretend this here is not the T letter, but um, wait, I have to find the right thing here. Like if we remove this here, we could argue that this is not a T, but this is actually the A. So then this would be um, an A. Let me just uh, get this stuff here right in a moment. Uh, this leaves. This is good that I <laughs> good that I wrote all the stuff here. So this could be an A. So you could be right that it actually me has the same. So we have basically um we are here because this here would actually um, fit. Now I have to just zoom again, and the the stuff here would would, would kind of fit. So um, let me just think for a moment, because it's always confusing doing all the stuff you live. Sash, yeah, that's here. So um, yeah, this could be then Aran. Then we would have um, like this here. Really hard to see now. I make it a bit smaller. This here would be then um, the A again. So we have um, Aran. That would act and definitely fit. Um, I'm just thinking. Did I uh, skip a letter? But no, it should be right. Right. And then here below. So what the letters we are missing here, let's make it maybe a little arrow here, um, would be then um, the the E. Ah, it's not it's a bit unfortunate. And uh, the I, right? Then this would be um, the N, the E. This here would be indeed not an E, but it would be an O. And then um, the last letter missing would be um, definitely, uh, again, oh, that's the, the wrong thing here, it uh, would be uh, the, the R again. Something like this. 
It seems almost too plausible. So I guess I, I think um, since my moderator, of course, has 9000 IQ, he might be right here. I hope he can also <laughs> translate what's written here, but yeah. if somebody knows like a source how to get a higher resolution image of it so we can read what is on the on the spear, that would be pretty awesome. But like I said, this here looked so much like um so much like an N. And then yeah. Yeah, then it would basically um the same again. So it would be Aran Ainyor. That's definitely the most plausible um, thing here. Uh, why is he wearing runes on his chest anyway? I don't know. This is definitely like a free thing. I can't remember that Tolkien described something like this, but um, since the, the, these runes are elvish, uh, in his origin they are elven runes, it makes sense that he could wear something like this. I definitely see it as interesting and of course for, for the elves, Elberes Gilthoniel, so Varda, the Queen of the Stars, is a very important uh, Vala and um, same of course as Manwe, the King of the um, Valar, um, that uh, definitely uh, would uh, make sense, if that makes sense. Uh, let me just do it like this. <laughs> Great question seems weird. Yeah, it's a bit unusual. Like, though from a, let's say, mythological standpoint, like considering how the um, elves um, really um, are connected to the stars and the starlight, like having Elberis makes sense. I guess Manwe as the elder king also makes completely sense that maybe as the king, like Manwe is the, um, is, is basically, how to describe him? Let me just see if I have the picture still loaded. No, yeah, I have it. So uh, Manwe is the elder king, the king of the world. So he's basically the, besides God himself, he's the highest or second highest authority in the world. And if you think about kings in a classical way, they always are also um, referencing um, that they were placed there by God. That's definitely um, a thing that happens. So having the mythological most important or the figures with the highest authority written on his royal robes, I again definitely can see this. I think it's a bit unusual that he might use Kirth as script instead of Tengwar. Oh, this is really hard to say for me, <laughs> Kirth. TH in English is really difficult for me. You probably noticed. <laughs> Wait, there's a higher authority than Morgoth. Yeah, there's some there's some people in chat. They just want to see the world burn. <laughs> yeah, kind of. They like went to Rivendell to be able to read to read the um, the moon runes. However, reading, of course, like for example, if you compare this to um, uh, if you compare this to to other languages or, uh, and so on, like with one writing system, you can write many languages. So uh, being able to read the runes and know what the letter means is different from knowing what the word there is written means. You know what I mean? And in addition, there was also these moon runes and you need like a specific day to show them and so on. So there was a, a bit more to it. Yeah, but... The dwarves, of course, also used this um, system. They adop adopted it from the elves, in case people wonder and just um, are here new to the uh, chat. <laughs> no one can use uh, Morgoth for me. Wow. Uh, 
but it's a friendly sort of wanting to see the world burn. Uh, maybe. Uh, if, we're, uh, if we're going for Valar names, he should have uh, Aule on them. Um, he's the friend of the Noldor. Definitely, uh, definitely a good point. We also know that, um, as you as you point out, some of the um, let me just get to my other picture. Uh, some of the uh, some of the elves also um, learned from from from, for example, Aule and so on. So there were the the elves in Aman, of course. That is, there is like an interesting uh, quote there somewhere. I think in the unfinished tales. Maybe I can find it really quick. Let me just see. I can read it. Of Aule and Yavanna in Valinor. Let me see if I find the quote. It would be pretty awesome if I find it. Yeah, so um, in the Unfinished Tales, in the uh, chapter um, History of Galadriel and Celeborn, we can read um, the following um, sentence. It's about um, a, a bit about the dwarves and how the elves see the dwarves and so on. Uh, Moreover, Galadriel was a Noldo, and she had a natural sympathy. I just lost the line here. Uh, sympathy with their with their minds, the dwarves, I assume, and their passionate love for craft of hand, and sympathy much greater than that found among many of the Eldar. The dwarves were the children of Aule, and Galadriel, like others of the Noldor, had been a pupil of Aule and Yavanna in Valinor. So, um, here we get like the hint that um, among the Eldar. Um, and others of the Noldor were actual pupils of the uh, of, of Aule and Yavanna. I have a good artwork actually of Aule and Yavanna, which I can just bring up in a moment if you give it also by Kimberly 80. <laughs> it looks a bit unusual, I guess, but I kind of like it, I have to admit. And uh, Aule and Yavanna. Yavanna is basically the Valar of nature and Aule of of smithing, crafting, blacksmithing, and so uh, and so on. And they are actually married, which is a very unusual thing that like the nature and the craftsmen um, are basically um, united in this way. Uh, it's pretty cool. And the the trees of Aule are, for example, the mountains, while the trees of Yavanna are the <laughs> normal trees. So um, it's it's very um, an interesting uh, concept Tolkien uh, puts there in his world. So you are right. Maybe it would be smarter to have them written. But I, as as explained before, I think you definitely can make the argument that as a royal king, you have also authority over others and so on. For example, um, if we think of um, our good old friend um, Isildur, um, he could. For example, uh, let me just see if I'll find a good picture of Isildur. Nope, that's wrong. Um, he, he, for example, could call upon Eru for O's. That happened, for example, with the O's breakers. Or um, in other cases, there are some hints in the in the books as well for that. So um, it, it said that, that Isildur also, I think the Numenorean kings and the uh, kings of Gondor and uh, Arnor could call upon Eru in certain things because they had the authority for this. I would make the argument that this is distantly similar for um, for example uh, distantly similar for I need to concentrate to spell Isildur and I failed. Now I made it. <laughs> Isildur. Um, yeah, you can make an argument that this is kind of um, similar with oh boy, height on this channel. Just for a moment, I was blinking and suddenly bots. Bot a lot. Yeah, I, I saw it. It just takes a moment till YouTube is. Sadly, uh, my my spam bot is too slow. To, to ban them. It probably would take him like five to seven seconds to do so, which is, in my opinion, a bit too slow. But in theory, 
it should ban him automatically. Maybe I can set this up here somewhere. I have spam protection deactivated on the other bot. Maybe I should try it this way. Well, I have to do this for next stream. I maybe try this out, but it's just too complicated to change this now live on stream. <laughs> the bots are legion of Sauron. Yeah, potential. But yeah, um, as said, if we now uh, jump back here, um, it is uh, definitely, it definitely makes sense that the highest authorities on the world, besides God himself, are written on, on his clothes. Like, I, I definitely can see some kind of symbolism in this, and I would argue it's somewhat distantly plausible. Still find it strange that he's so golden. I agree um, with many people here. But so far, um, I have to say, um, seeing the new screenshots and especially um, his spear and so on, I'm kind of sold on um, so far on um, on on Gilgalad. It definitely, I don't know, it works out for me. I'm very curious to see him. Um, I guess the Roman style one has to get used to a little bit, but um, overall, uh, I can't uh, complain too much about it. And I also, it, it seems like a lot of people um, seem to, to like him. Let me just um, <laughs> get the, the picture back here. I have like, like I have like 15 or 20 scenes here in this thing. I sometimes have trouble to find the right one. Um, which is, um, yeah, difficult. <laughs> I know who Narvi is. Yeah, that's of course also an important character. I'm very curious, like, it would be um, a crime to not show him in, in, in the show. Like, I definitely think we need to see Narvi in the show if it's about Eregion, Kilibrimbor, and the Second Age. Uh, report. Uh, hopefully, Gilgalad's voice is good. Um, I think uh, Benjamin Walker is the actor's name. I not I don't know him too well. I have to admit. So I assume he will sound quite similar. <laughs> Justice for Narvi. Yeah, very very curious um, to see. We already saw like some other screenshots. Um, that gave us um, some some other ideas. I'm not sure if we discussed them here on the channel before. Don't want to expand this here for too long, to be honest. As uh, too. Let me just um, see if I find them really quick. It was not the IGN stuff. I think it was the Empire stuff. Like on in the um, Empire magazine now the source is wrong, but um, I can link. Th no, I can't link the article really quick. But yeah, uh, we had for example this screenshot here already in the past of him, so we knew round about the direction uh, where he's going. We saw him in the trailer already. Let me just see. There was another screenshot which was kind of interesting. This one here, I think, also from the uh, Empire article. I make this bigger. It kind of kind of fits. And this one here, it seems like he, um, yeah, I think we discussed this in the past. Now I remember it, but it's it's yeah, it's it's quite interesting. If we zoom in, we see Gilgalad putting on um, like one of these laurels, or whatever they are called in English. Um, on Galadriel's uh, head. I, I assume this this person here is Galadriel. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. We also see his um his sash here, and also his own laurels and so on. Very uh, interesting. 
what's going on there. Very curious what this scene will be when 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 the stuff comes out. Not kind of works. This photo looks like a painting. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty. Uh, they definitely. I wouldn't say it's a surreal coloring, but you know what you mean. It um, there is something to it. <laughs> it's Calibur. Uh, why why do they have plate mail? Yeah, that is also a very unusual choice. I agree on that. That um, we see the elves with uh, plate mail stuff. Let me just see if I can find like the classic Galadriel shot. Um, where could be the Galadriel shot? Yeah, here is the Galadriel armor shot. Um, from the Vanity Fair this time. The others were from the Empire magazine. Um, it, it's an interesting idea that they go with like um, plate armor in in a way, because but in like you have to elves are kind of very advanced beings in Middle Earth, and maybe this is their way of portraying this um, difference by maybe giving them armor from. A different um, era, like in comparison, like if we compare it to our world and history and so on. <laughs> it is silver, though. It is silver, though. You can see through the armor. That's funny. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> well, it's probably very, it's very hot there, so. Yeah, I definitely agree. It, it feels very unusual um, to the Tolkien world. Um, definitely agree on that. I guess we maybe have to make our minds a bit free from this, but I assume they definitely want to show like a difference in development and civilization or whatever you want to call it. Like if you think of civilization, the game where you can have like advance to a different era and the others are just three errors back and you are <laughs> there sh shooting with bows and arrows and you're coming with tanks something like this so they really want to show that there's like um, a huge huge difference between um the elves in their development in the second age the elves are still there in more like full strength i wouldn't say full strength but closer to this the, the dwindling of the elves is not as strong as in the third age and so they are still a force and they have a military and they fight wars in the second age. And as a result, um, we also have to see like the military cap capabilities of the elves, which must have been quite impressive considering how um, advanced they are compared to men in, in many areas. The only exception would be Numenor, of course. And um, yeah, I, I guess they use this as an element to portray this. But I definitely see why you think this looks very off. I, I agree could have been done differently, but I think if it if it's done well and somewhat consistently, um, you can definitely can get used to it. I think that's definitely my my uh, my smallest concern about the show, to be honest. <laughs> Let me just uh, move back to the um, other image really quick. I have so many images here; it becomes really messy navigating them. Oh, I also should maybe put the right source back on so people know where they find it. That is the arrow. That's wrong. There's a source. <laughs> it's John Dark uh, meets Queen Elizabeth II <laughs> meets Vikings. Yeah, something like this. It can easily happen, like you described, that it feels that too many different um, styles clash in the series and then you can, uh, ca can't take it uh, serious anymore. Numenorian airships. Um, yeah, the, Tolkien wrote a version that is published in, like, he wrote a text in a very specific content. It's a bit complicated. I even have artwork I can use, even though I, I don't have the label prepared. I think 
I have the label prepared. So there's an artist called, um, uh, I think, uh, Min Gwen. I'm not I'm butchering his name because Asian phonology is, uh, my knowledge is <laughs> insanely limited. And he allowed me to use like an, uh, um, an airship artwork he did for like um, how this could look. It's pretty beautiful artwork, but I asked him and he allowed me to use it. And um, yeah, the new, in, in, in this version published in um, um, uh, Lost Writings, The Lost Road and Other Writings, yeah, Lost Road and Other Writings, um, it's one of the History of Middle Earth books, um, there it is mentioned that the Numenorians had, like Tolkien really wanted to make the Numenorians advanced, like very advanced, so he gave them basically ships that could um, that could move through the water without sailing also without sails and um they had um there are hints that they had guns and um also flying ships that could fly around so airships and um yeah that is um quite uh it's not a Tolkien um, artwork by the way it's just for something else but uh, i just needed a cool artwork of an of an of a flying ship of an airship it's not Middle Earth. It's definitely not Middle Earth. But the the point was like if Tolkien would have went with um in this video I made um which is called I don't know Lord of the Rings or and technology or something like this, um the point was basically Tolkien could have also have influenced um steampunk a little bit which came up I think a, a bit later, and um <laughs> if he would have went with Numenor having airships and so on. So that is, in my opinion, um, a pretty cool um, spin on it. It's not a Tolkien artwork, though, but I really, um, it's a pretty cool artwork. Used it in one of, the, uh, one of my videos on my channel. Maybe I can find it because always good to. Um, yeah, technology in Lord of the Rings and its law, something like this. It was called. I can post it in chat if people are interested in this video. And there, for that, I asked the artist to use them the, the artwork there. But yeah, Tolkien changed this and said, "Okay, I, it's probably too much. I don't need these airships and guns, um, for the Numenorians. They, I can still make them very, very advanced by not using that." And yeah, that is, it's, I would say, um, the least canon version that exists of Numinor. <laughs> Could you imagine um, the, la um, the last uh, Alliance army um, is rolling up in Mount Doom, at Mount Doom, and uh, Isildur pops uh, <laughs> Sauron with a flintlock pistol. <laughs> that would be very funny, I guess. With silver bullets, of course. Because um, in, in uh, Sauron in uh, the First Age also transformed into a wolf. So he's clearly a werewolf. <laughs> Least canon version, yeah. <laughs> you see what... I just made a pun and didn't even notice. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> the least canon version. I like that. Shoutouts to Kill Switch. <laughs> like, that was a really good one. I see what you did there. exactly. Stop! My brain hurts enough as it is. Yeah, it's like um, a lot of fascinating stuff going on there. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> Not sure airships would have worked. Yeah, probably they would have not worked in the world and have, would have made a lot of things um, like unfortunate, complicated or so. It is... Um, yeah, it makes sense that Tolkien did not went for airships. I agree on that. But still, it's pretty cool that it, it at one point it was a sort of Tolkien. But Tolkien then went here. We have like a beautiful Ted uh, Naismith art, uh, artwork. It's also related to Aldarion and Erendis when he comes back to Numinor. 
really one of my favorite also one of my favorite Ted Nasmith artworks. I really like that one. I don't know why it's I really like it. So we have more the classical um the classic ships in in this. That's how they brought down Baradur with cannons. <laughs> Carry this schedule. <laughs> wow. But yeah, it's it's really it is a fun fact. Balloons would not be so far fetched. That is uh that is true, I guess. Though I can't remember like I think outside of this little outlier from a very old weird version developed in a very weird context re um, in relation to Numinor, I think flying and outside of eagles, um, flying is relatively underdeveloped in Tolkien's world, I would say. Like there's very little flying going on. But um, I'm not even sure what uh, time it is or how long I'm already streaming. That's never a good sign. Oh, we are I'm getting close to two hours. Considering that other streamers, like, for two screenshots, they stream, like, only an hour or half an hour or something. <laughs> we are pretty far already. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, are there... Further questions to um, this artwork here. Are there any hints? Did I forget to mention anything? I mean, of course, we could go through the complete history of Gilgalad, but as said, he was pretty good at foreseeing what's coming. He had also Círdan and Elrond as advisors, and both of them were known for their foresight as well. When Sauron... Uh, knocked at his door and said, hey, I'm totally not Sauron. Um, he did not let him in, so shout-outs to uh, Gilgalad. It seems like he did a lot of things right. And very unfortunate that, yeah, then in the War of the Last Alliance, uh, uh, um, Gilgalad sadly um, is slain by Sauron. And we saw um, Saruman mixing gunpowder, right? In the in, like in the books, it is let's say distantly hinted at that it's something like gunpowder. It's not explicitly stated though. Though of course, um, there is like some device. I think I talk about this in this video that I just uh, posted in chat as well. But yeah, <laughs> not the Chris I know. The problem is I already like in this month. If I look at my streaming, um list here. I already streamed like how many times? This is the fourth stream this month. Usually I do in bad months I do one. Usually I should do two. This month I did four. Like this is the fourth stream this month. And I also pumped out really a lot of content. It was a pretty good month, I would say. I almost would have released another video today. But it's sadly not um, done yet, so it will come out maybe tomorrow if I manage to finish it tomorrow or um, Saturday. But it's relatively, if nothing comes in my way, let's put it that way, it should be done very soon. And also one of the streams I did was literally 5 hours 21 long. <laughs> And I also did voice recording for a couple of hours today, so... <laughs> no, the more live streams, the better. I'm very happy that people enjoy the live streams so much. And a lot of people here watching this, watching me talk for like two hours, like an absolute maniac. Um, it's really impressive always. 
Though I definitely know that some people will comment and say, hey, you didn't announce this live stream and so on. I demand more live streams, please. The problem with live streams is a bit that, except for very rare occasions, my live streams never will get um, the attention my um, videos get. So it makes more sense to focus on the videos and um, like, you need to make some, some time in the evening for a few hours and so on. And sometimes you're also tired. I'm actually quite tired today. Um, I just streaming till late in the night all the time. Yes, you must not stop streaming, Chris. It was not hating, just making uh, fun that it usually ends at 3 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, it's just... Uh, it didn't... Uh, uh, didn't um, um, percept it as you hating or so. Just I know that people might be expect me to stream for <laughs> three or four hours every time, but my mind I really want to do a shorter stream today. But like I said I'm really surprised that so many uh, people are here. Are there any I don't know interesting topics to discuss? There was like another news which we could maybe also briefly talk about. Um, that is distantly related. And there was like, yeah, the the idea of, like the problem is a bit, it gets me really worried when it comes to the Amazon show. It's definitely, besides, we haven't heard any dialogue yet, which is one of my biggest concerns, or maybe the biggest concern, that they don't nail the dialogue. Um, another one is definitely the time compressions and the changes to what Tolkien actually wrote. And like, it, it, if you see all these leaks, um, that for example, um, shoutouts to Fellowship of Fans, who um, um, usually is pretty reliable to uh, when it comes to to leaks and what might be in the show so far. And um, yeah, recently also some stuff got out, and it was about that um, I don't know. Numinor suddenly has like a cavalry and um, I don't know, not that many, not a ship fleet and they're slowly expanding it and so on. It's so weird to hear these, like there are certain times where these kind of fit to Numinor, except for the cavalry stuff, like I never imagined a Numinor as a nation with a huge cavalry and in the books we actually find notes about that the, the Numinorians really liked horses, but they liked them more for, let's say, sport, not for war. And um, it's even stated by Tolkien that Numinor only takes, like, some some riders on horses to war as, as messengers and so on, not not as a, as a main force. So that seems kind of strange. And of course, same with um, some, some other details there, with a description of the armor that it might have some kind of horse theme going on with with at least the swords, seems also a bit unusual to me. I guess, yeah, you can get used to that. But it's always like the, the, the big concern, like Galadriel maybe coming to, um, <laughs> on a ship or whatever, or on a raft coming to a uh, Numinor, that seems to me like very off often, especially if you consider that um, Elendil and Isildur might be in the show, which is very late second age. And it seems like they just compress it so much that events that are usually 1,600 years apart suddenly happen in parallel, and that seems to me very, very strange. Yeah, for example, uh, the time compression is probably, as, as Snow Warning says, an understatement. Like, Arfarazon living before the Rings of Power actually um, done and so on. Like, yeah, it, it's definitely compression in the sense that these events are just suddenly happened in parallel, which didn't was not the case before. <laughs> so only three hours instead of five hours. Gotcha. Yeah, something like that. Good to get some uh, in-depth talk of you. Yeah, I, I feel like I can see, like, for example, Peter Jackson also did some, let's call it time compression in the Lord of the Rings films. For example, if we think of um, the birthday of uh, Bilbo um, that happens um, second age 3000 one and 
Frodo leaving the Shire, that happens 3018, <laughs> so 17 years later. And in the in the films, you get like the impression that um, Bilbo's birthday and Frodo leaving the Shire is like a few weeks or maybe at most months at part, maybe a year or so. But you don't, you never get the, um, you never get the impression of um, of of. Uh, Bilbo's uh, birthday um, being close to, to uh, and, and, and Frodo leaving. Oh, I have to find a screenshot of Frodo leaving. I have this particular one. Yeah, I found it. It's one of my favorite, um, see, uh, also a very cool scene, one of my favorite screenshots from the scenes in the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and Frodo leaving the Shire, um, like that, there are seventeen years in between, and there's also a little bit of plot um, actually missing, which is uh, really unfortunate in my opinion. But it makes sense if you have like a very limited um, time. And um, I think I used the other screenshot. This one's maybe even better. Not sure. But yeah, it's it's always a problem, and especially if you um, if you decide to make a show about the second age, which is which is three thousand four hundred forty-four years long, uh, forty-one years long, three thousand four hundred forty-one uh, years long. Then maybe you should not have chosen this age and make a series out of uh, a series out of it if you if you just want to change everything so much it's definitely a big concern but of course i give them the benefit of the doubt and see how it will look in the in the final show i guess we will have a lot of uh our <laughs> show and book comparisons um stuff we might have to discuss quite a bit <laughs> I feel like it's even more weird though the wizard rolls up and tells you that the ring you found 18 years ago is super dangerous and you need to flee. Yeah, probably that's, that's true. It's different from compressing the whole segment. I, I agree. And it makes sense in the films because not that much happens in this time. Though I were compressing the whole second age to just everything that happens there and happens in parallel, yeah, it's, it's a big difference. But we have to see how big the time compression will be actually in the end. Like I have no idea how the series will be or the series will be structured. I always say the word wrong, but yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> also, the films don't have ten episodes spread over five seasons. That's an <laughs> another point. The thing is only eight episodes per season, right? I'm not sure about this, but kind of remember the number eight. But still your point stands, I guess. Like the time compression in this show is like so massive. It would be um, like you make a show, um, I don't know, that you want to, in your show you want to cover, I don't know, the the... Uh, what do you call the Punian, Punische Kriege in in German, um, the, the wars of um, Caesar against um, Carthago, and uh, well, it's not Caesar; it's actually well, whatever. I think the Second Punic War was around the time Caesar left. Whatever, it does, it's not yeah Punic Wars. Nice. Um, and then suddenly um, you have World War II in it. Like, this is almost the relationship that some of the stuff here is getting. Like, Sauron coming to Eregion was, I think, 1200. Um, the, the fall of Numenor is 3200, so 2000 years later. It's kind of, um, yeah, a ridiculous time jump there. The 
Punic Wars. I think it's pronounced Punic, right? The English vowels are always a nightmare <laughs> for me. Not as bad as prepositions, though. Sometimes I really have to ask native speakers um, what the correct preposition is. Like last time I wrote like a script, or I read the script, I wasn't sure. Is it in honor or to the honor of or something like this? It's I think it's uh, in the honor of somebody. But yeah. I would have also um, liked the concept more, I agree, um, if they, for example, picked one specific event in the Second Age, like, for example, the forging of the Rings of Power, and then the whole season is only about this, and the next season is about a different event with maybe even complete different cast except for the elves um, that just appear there as well. And um, then the second season covers, I don't know, whatever comes next, the... The, the slow fall of Numenor in one season or so. Definitely, or the end of Numenor. And that kind, like something like this, could have worked to portray the the vast length of the Second Age pretty well, in my opinion, but I guess it's also a problem. <laughs> we gems, we can, can't complain. We make Foreman just learn um, the correct... <laughs> <laughs> choice of dare D does for every noun. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> like, we can't complain. Like, while speaking German, I think when it comes to just pronunciation, German is pretty easy, but the um, grammar is, at, in some cases, absolutely brutal. Not as not as tough as Latin, though, or as Icelandic, or some... Uh, even Polish, um, I think, is also pretty tough. Like, even more tough than uh, the German grammar, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> Definitely a detail that makes German kind of learning German kind of annoying, I assume. But yeah, definitely a, a big concern I have. It could be cool seeing the same ring bearers still around, even though um, they should be long dead also. Don't Numenorians live for a long time? That is true, but I think the 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 longest time a Numenorian lived was like around about 500 years. Not sure if that was um, Elros who lived that long. And he was half elven, so he was kind of a special case, I guess. Um, on top of that. And then later they lived like 250 or something like this. still a long time, but if you need like 2,000 years of time, then 250 years are also not that much anymore. Like the dwarves also only live for around about 200 to 300 years. I think also 250 around about. <laughs> I studied German for six years in school. Still can't express more than counting to 20. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely um, see a problem there. Lucky for me, it's my native language, so I don't have to... Like, I also learned it in a way, but I learned it in a different way. And yeah, learning English is much more pleasant. Also, I learned Latin in school, so... And I also can't have a conversation in Latin. We only had to translate, to be honest, but... Yeah, Latin is really, like, oh, so complicated. So many grammatic little details. So many suffixes or whatever the correct term for it is. They also don't have fear ca grammatical cases, but um, five or actually six to be honest, but the vocative probably doesn't really count. Learned Latin almost remember nothing. You are so blessed. Well, you if you don't use Latin frequently, you forget it because it's a really complex um, uh, language. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's 
I have some basic knowledge of it, but I definitely uh, lose it relatively. F you lose it over time if you don't refresh it um, frequently. I guess that's with every other language that you don't use. Like, I guess my English got much better when I started making videos. It was also one of my early intentions. <laughs> I failed Spanish six times and French once. Yeah, we have the. I could have decided between French and Latin, and I went with Latin. The audio stream speed rate is currently zero. That is strange. But yeah, Latin definitely helps you understanding um, a lot of other languages and how languages developed over time and you also learn a bit of history which was pretty cool mix kind of french would have probably been more useful so <laughs> i guess when it comes to actually conversing and so on but yeah as a result i have no clue about french It might might be that these days Latin is even more unpopular these days because you don't need it that much anymore and in, in if you go to university or so. I'm not sure how how um the difference was in my time when I went to school though between Latin and um, probably it was always a bit smaller, I guess. Yeah, I guess most, at least on the higher school forms, you definitely learn English in German, uh, in Germany. Yeah, it's basically a mandatory. Depends, I guess, on the school form. You learn it on every school form, I would, uh, I would think. But um, I guess the the level to which um, you are able to speak it varies a lot and of course I learned my, my English got much better when I went out of school and had to use it in my daily life more no the second foreign language is only required um, on the uh, higher school forms in Germany when that you need to get like that are requirement to go to university for example the, the highest that you learn the you also learn a second lang uh, foreign language french latin spanish there might be there may be some schools that also offer like i don't know some other languages but standard is like french latin and maybe spanish i would have liked to learn spanish though always wanted to maybe do this at some point but I'm too lazy. That's that's the problem. But we're drifting away from, of course, very important Tolkien topics. That's um, for sure. I wouldn't say a problem, but still um, the main topic of the stream, I guess. I also did not do any, um, what's it called, preparations like credits or so, because I have to use the credits from last time, because we'll end the stream soon. <laughs> to be fair, Germans have it pretty easy learning English, despite all the Latin and French influence. English is still a um, fellow West Germanic language. Yeah, that is true. Like There's many similarities, and the stuff that's complicated in German is pretty easy in English, so it's relatively good to learn for German. Definitely a problem is, for me at least, pronunciation. I think English pronunciation is, like, you really have to learn how stuff is pronounced in English because it's, it often seems like to not follow any um, rule that makes sense. Like, I don't know. It is um, a deer, but it is a bear. <laughs> like, it's only one letter is a... Uh, uh, not a deer, it's, um, for example, I don't know. You know what I mean. Like, you changed one letter, or um, he lives and um, he has two lives, or something like this. Like, it's just li lives and lives is written, this spelled the same, but it's pronounced differently. St 
stuff like this is like confusing and sometimes i see like a word i only know maybe from reading or not at all and i have no idea how to pronounce it it's difficult i i, I guess some people are better at this than i am because phonology is uh probably not my, my best but i think pronunciation of english has a lot of little um, nuance to it English doesn't follow runes. You have to memorize lots of runes. Yeah, exactly. That's my impression as well. Knowing both Swedish and English uh, did not help when learning German. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, Swedish is also pretty cool, I think. A lot of cool languages. It's always fascinating that they... That all these languages are somehow related. That is true. Actually, discussing language is a talking topic. You are to you are completely right. Like to learn black speech, I could um, scare the life out of folks. <laughs> Probably. But sadly, there's not that many, or not that much about black, speak, uh, black speech information in Tolkien's works. We have like only um, the, the ring uh, verse in black speech that is in some, some other words, and that's basically it. Yeah, Tolkien was a linguist or a philologist by uh, profession. <laughs> Nothing is more Tolkien than discussing language. That is true, and that is why I also much, much appreciate if we come back to our... Um, why is this black? Oh, okay, I get it now. Uh, if we come back here to, to what we just did, like... Come on. I can't zoom in. No. Um, yeah, like we discussed the writing system here, the language, uh, what it means, and so on. It's um, like they put some definitely some effort into the to, to the language stuff. Um, there was also sadly I can't read it, and like Kuz Duel is always a complicated so the language of the dwarves. Is always a complicated topic because there is so little information about it. Maybe I can bring this up again if I see it. Where am I? No, it's Empire. Empire is wrong. It's Vanity Fair, I think. I hope that works. Um, yeah, we had, for example, this screenshot of um, of uh, Disa. And uh, we have all the cool stuff in the background, and we spent like a whole stream uh, and vi or a whole video I spent on trying to read the stuff here in the background. And um, yeah, somebody wrote this and um, put some effort into it. There was also some some person posted like a translation of it, but as said, the um, stuff like I, only stuff I could read was um, oh somewhere here it it's written Casa Dumo, so. Of Casa Doom, it was some of the stuff on this side here written in the background. I think it was here on this side. But yeah, it's somebody puts definitely in the work, or somebody wrote um, here on this on this thing. Wait, it's probably easier to do it in in Photoshop. But somebody wrote this stuff here on on the on the on the weapon on an eye gloss. Even though we can't read it. Oh, I moved it, right? Whatever. We can't read what's uh, written here. Wait, that is a stupid idea to do it like this. So I do it... I don't know the shortcut of this of the pen tool. Might be P. Is it P? It's H, okay. <laughs> Almost. Like, like somebody wrote this down here, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Sadly, we can't read it yet. But I hope when the series, come, uh, when the series comes out, we can read it.
uh, I was always interested in Persian because it it's distantly related to most European languages, but I would have to learn Arabic script, uh, which makes it doubly hard. Yeah, that is true. Quenya is my favorite language. Yeah, Quenya is pretty cool. I agree on that. Though I also really like Sindarin. It's a really weird reason why um, it's the letter Y, which is pronounced as U. I don't know why. I kind of find this pretty cool that this exists in this language as, as, a, as an additional vowel, basically. Uh. There's a poem that describes. Uh, there's a poem that describes um, the a sort of um, Gilgalad. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe somebody in chat knows another thing. Gilgalad sword is definitely mentioned though. But in the poem, for example, it says his sword was long, his lens was keen, his shining helm um, afar was seen. The countless stars of heaven's field were mirrored in a silver shield. So he had a shield, a sword. I assume the lens potentially is his is his spear. So uh, something like this. Um, there was also to find now the quote again. Now that's wrong. <laughs> in the unfinished tales, um, there's also a hint. And because his helm and mail and shield is here um, stars from afar, sunlight no, it says this sword is not mentioned here. Could maybe try finding no twenty four. May I look at the letter? Oh, for he saw that it came from King Gilgalad in Lindon. It was sealed and bore his device of white stars upon a blue rondure. I think that's how it's pronounced. Upon the outer fold was written, given at Mislond to the hand of Lord, uh, Lord Aldarion, King's heir of Numinore, uh, to be delivered to the High King of Ar uh, Armenilos in person. That's what... And uh, to... To this, we have no 24. I'm not sure if in the Silmarillion or anywhere is um, a mention of this sword. Like I said, out of my head. Um, yeah, it's definitely, the, uh, his sword is definitely described. That is 100% correct. I'm not sure, though, if, like, there is more... Yeah, Gilgalad was using uh, for his spear. Eyegloss is the name. But he also... Is described with um, having a, a spear. In the Silmarillion, we can also read against Aiglos, the spear of Gilgalad, none could stand. And the sword of Elendil filled orcs and men with fear, for it shone with the light of the sun and of the moon, and it was named Narthil. So that is the famous quote from the Silmarillion where uh, Gilgalad's uh, spear, Aiglos, is described. It is also mentioned, I guess, that's a good question. Is it mentioned in Lord of the Rings? That I have to admit. I know one thousand percent sure it is mentioned. Yeah, it's basically um in the I assume Council of of Elrond. Yeah, it should be the Council of Elrond here. We can't see it here. Yeah, it's the Council of Elrond. And um, there it basically says, um, I was the herald, of, so Elrond is uh, talking, I was the herald of Gilgalad and marched with his host. I was um, at the battle of da Dagorlad before the Black Gate of Mordor, where we had the mastery for the spear of Gilgalad and the sword of Elendil, Aiglos and Narsil, none could withstand. That's from the Lord of the Rings, the Council of Elrond chapter. But yeah, here the spear is mentioned. However, in the poem, the spear is not mentioned, uh, which is kind of interesting. That's also a lens, and it's also like he had a shield. 
a silver shield and um, um, a long sword. Yeah, his sword was long, his length was keen, and so on and so forth. Yeah, exactly. That is, um, his sword was long, his length was keen. Is uh, the 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 poem that um, Sam uh, quotes. I think it was uh, it was translated by Bilbo, and um, uh, Sam memorized it, something like this. Though he knows it from Bilbo Baggins. And also very, um, let's call it, uh, f yeah, famous is maybe a strong word, but definitely um, also known. Not sure how to show this to you on screen, though. I guess I do this with this place here. Um, there's also the game Shadow of uh, War Mordor and Shadow of War, and both of them also have... Like uh, the spear of uh, Gilgalad in them. Let me see if I find it. So far, it's looking bad for you. Hmm. Did I never do a make a screenshot of that? Maybe it's from the DLC or so. Or was it in Shadow of Mordor? I'm not 100% sure on that. Too long ago. No, I don't have a screenshot of uh, the spear there, which is really strange. But whatever. No, yeah, Sam sang it uh, in the night before, meeting the elves on the road. Yeah, exactly. Or was it there? No, it was when they were uh, on their way with Strider already. It's a knife in the dark, so it's before they reach Weathertop, or when they reach Weathertop. Lens and spear can be used as synonym. Yeah, that is, I assume that is what happens here. Maybe. There's some, um, what do you, poetic freedom, I guess you call it. What's up with all the gold? Um, we talked about this already. I find it strange as well, but we already discussed that on, basically, he was called Gilgalat, which, which means Star of Radiance, because he reflected the light what was that was shining on him. So, um, if he would... In sunlight, he maybe would reflect more golden, and when it was moonlight, he would reflect more silver, just a theory. Maybe they try to capture this here. Uh, I'm not sure. There is a scene in the trailer, which uh, will be difficult for me to play here right now. That's dark, and he's also golden, but it looks, the darkness looks a bit artificial, to be honest. Like, it's not the scene is dark, it was just um, darkened, if that makes sense, but I don't, I'm not sure. So far, um, yeah, I, I like the design. Like, the spear looks unusual, but I kind of like it, I have to admit. Even though it's more like a, a Naginata. Or at least in the in the style of it, in, distantly, if that makes sense. Yeah, or a glaive, that's probably a better word for it, right? It was a twilight, man. <laughs> kind of. I did Gilgalad see the two trees? Um, Defen... Well, that's a really good question, to be honest. Depends on where he's born. I would assume no, he did not. I think it is most likely not. I'm very sure that he did not see the um, two trees. 
I think he was born in Beleriand. Because he's a relatively young elf. He is depending on the version. But I'm not 100% sure if it is ever, like, in one version there is... Is there an explicit date for his... Explicit birth date for him in some book? I'm not sure about this. I think it's not. It's just assumed. It makes sense because um, when he's first mentioned, he's very young or, uh, still. As a result... Um, Okay, it says uh, somewhere between years of the trees 1450 and um, first age 455 on Tolkien Gateway. So I would assume, yeah, something like this. Like I, I would argue, I'm not sure if then it is an explicit statement that it, that makes it impossible for him to see the two trees. If he would be born in Amman, maybe-ish it would be possible, but I think he's born in Beleriand. And, um, yeah. Probably around the year one. Maybe a bit later. Really hard to say, to be honest. Let's see if there's like in the article. The problem with the birth, yeah. there are multiple conflicting uh, accounts of Gilgalad's parents, birthplace, and year of birth. Tolkien's final word regarding Gilgalad's parents has to be the son of Oro Dres. It is um, the son Oro Dres is the son of Angrod, and Angrod is a brother of um, Galadriel. Okay, that is an interesting one. Let me just see if I find this in the book really quick. Like it seems like there is an information in Nature of Middle Earth, which I probably read at some point but forgot of again. Aging of the Elves. That says he was born in Eldamar. It's uh, from Aging of the Elves in Nature of Middle Earth. Eldamar. Okay, that is strange. Does not appear here. Aging of the Elves. Strange. Oh, it's just some calculation stuff. Uh, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Not sure where they get the information that he was born in Eldamar there. At least from just skipping through the text really, really fast. Yeah, Orodres got around. It's complicated though. Like, this first place is really complicated. I like the uh, version where it's the son of Fingon better. Yeah, I, I can understand. That's the um, version from the Silmarillion um, that most people might know, though Tolkien wasn't happy with it um, because, yeah, the, the Silmarillion, how to put it, like putting him with uh, a son of Fingon. makes him the next heir because Fingon was hiking of the uh, Noldor elves before um, Turgon and after Fingon's death Turgon got 
king. But if this was actually be the case, Gilgalad should have been king, a uh, high king of the Noldor. He was because he was Fingon's son, if that makes sense. I think that is a little conflict. You could argue he was too young to become king yet or so, but he isn't even mentioned or considered in this context. So it seems strange to me that he would be placed there in the family tree. There's even a version where Gilgalad is the brother of, G of Galadriel, if I remember correctly. So there's a lot of... Tolkien really tried a lot of stuff with Gilgalad. Now I can only see golden bunny ears, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, he should have been before Turgon that way, exactly. I read that Tolkien considered the Lord of Rings trilogy to be a sequel to the notes that became the Silmarillion. It's, a, it's very complicated to unpack the law, and uh, interestingly, um, yeah, basically, Tolkien originally wrote that's called the Book of Lost Tales, originally like a mythology for for England. And um, this developed into the Silmarillion, and he worked on this even before he worked on The Hobbit. So this existed first, at least to some degree, and it became just um, more and more, um, how to put it, it became just more complex, and he just wrote more and more about it. As a result, um, then he wrote The Hobbit, and he borrowed a few things from the Silmarillion, basically, already. That's why Elrond is there. But in the very early versions, Elrond became the first king of Númenor, and um, as a result, um, Tolkien had to make something up for the sequel Lord of the Rings, so Elrond now has a twin brother, Elros, and uh, Elrond um, just, yeah, be became the Elven Lord. So, there are some, some changes, but um, Lord of Rings was written as a sequel to The Hobbit, or was intended to be a sequel to The Hobbit, and it is one. But when he started writing that, like, the problem with The Hobbit was he wanted to, maybe there was a time when he wanted to let The Hobbit play inside the world of the Silmarillion already, but the um, Elros, not Elros. <laughs> and... Um, he wanted to play in the Silmarillion already, but it was not developed enough just yet. As a result, it is a very difficult to make it there. And that's why we also find, for example, reference reference to Gondolin there and so on. We have an elven king, which is not named Thingol yet. And um, this makes, or this hints at that, I wouldn't say it hints at, but maybe there was a time when um, th there was a time when Tolkien actually planned to have the Hobbit inside of Beleriand, maybe-ish. There might be a time when the Arkenstone, for example, also was a Silmarilli, uh, one of the Silmarilli, um, uh, so a Silmaril, and so on. It's, it's kind of um, fascinating how the connection between Hobbit and very early versions of the Silmarillion were. Like, there was also, Sauron was still called uh, Thu at this time, and um, yeah, that fits more like a necromancer as it's hinted at in, in The Hobbit and so on. So there are some parallels, but it seems it wasn't developed enough yet, so Tolkien abandoned this idea already, and um, then he just wrote his book and completed his story. And then with, when he was asked to write a sequel to it, he just connected the Lord of the Rings, or he developed the Silmarillion further and connected the Lord of the Rings very heavy to it. And then after the, the Lord of the Rings was basically almost written, I think, yeah, completed 49 I th or so, then he lifted, changed the Hobbit again a bit in the second edition, where some... Um, interesting stuff was changed and that is um yeah very that's a very interesting uh, detail so he changed for example riddles in the dark so that it fits 
um, better to what to to the idea of a one ring in Lord of the Rings and so on. And then he basically lifted the Hobbit also into the universe of the Silmarillion, same as with um, the Lord of the Rings, though it also started basically um, to be very heavily ti heavily tied to the Lord uh, to the Silmarillion universe, and. So yeah, it it's kind of right that it is somewhat a sequel because the because a lot of rings is very deeply rooted and connected to the Silmarillion as well, and um, yeah, the the Hobbit is kind of a really interesting special case in this. Yeah, that is true. That it's really a fascinating topic. For example, um. It, it's like a little detail that will come up in my next video, maybe tomorrow or Saturday. And, and they also briefly talk again about Elrond's early version, where in the, in the Hobbit he's called an elf friend. And I always people wonder, why is that? And I just um, looked a bit into the history of the Hobbit again. And there a very old manuscript of Tolkien is published. And um, in this, there's the line where he says, um, Elrond looked and then... Uh, almost like an elf lord. So you notice in this phrasing already that at this very, very, very early version, before even he did his first typescript of the story, um, Elrond was potentially not an elf yet. So he took Elrond from the 1926 version, where he becomes the first king of Númenor or something, just borrowed him um, for, his, for his book and uh, maybe went with his original idea. And then he later changed this idea and also changed... Um, removed this almost again and he looks like an elf lord which still might so there's some fragments i assume left of very early ideas of tolkien um, in this particular passage it's also he's described um in the first edition and also in the second edition and the later editions of the hobbit that um elrond looked as kind as summer and in the very early um uh, script uh, the, this manuscript version of the hobbit he wrote he looked as kind as christmas so Tolkien probably wanted to avoid anachronisms here and uh, remove this. And in the first TypeScript, it's already as kind as summer. So yeah, it's a really interesting detail. I have to potato to pick with you. But yeah, that is um, the the connection of the Silmarillion, the Hobbit and Lord of Rings. It's really complicated and Tolkien sadly never finished the Silmarillion in his lifetime and only wrote, um, and Christopher Tolkien, his son, completed it from the texts of his father wrote. Though his father tried to make like a consistent book out of it, but he also did not find a publisher for it, which uh, was also a problem. But, um, yeah, it's a really fascinating um, topic-wise. Yeah, just um, see also like a confirmation of my interpretation here. Uh, Tolkien's publication history is fascinating. Do you know anything more about his struggles uh, in that regard, Chris? Yeah, that they are like like when it comes to publications or. Things actually published. Um, I guess stuff worked out. There are some details. For example, um, there was um, a second edition of the Lord of the Rings that also had like a few editions from 1966 or 65, I think. 
So um, 10 years after the Lord of Rings came out. And for example, I know not many out of my head. I know only know one. And there he changed something in the Lord of the Rings. That is really a fascinating detail, I think. That has to do with Kili Brimbor. It's in Appendix B. And um, yeah, he added the sentence there. Um, let me just see. Uh, he added the sentence, Celebrimbor was Lord of Eregion and the greatest of the craftsmen. He was descendant from Feanor. I think this he added later in 1965 or 66 in the second edition of the Lord of the Rings to Appendix B. It was not in the original um, edition, interestingly. So, yeah, this definitely ties um, Celebrimbor to Eregion and that he was Lord over Eregion which is a very interesting detail and of course there might be other ideas in le even later versions but the whole background part is Tolkien constantly trying to make stuff fit. For example he also moved some birth dates around of uh, I think or wanted to of Arwen and Eladan and Elrohir and so on. He had big troubles making something with the orc origin uh, story like that was a huge huge struggle. And he never really was able to solve it. And then, yeah, he could sadly in his lifetime never um, finish that stuff. There was also the idea to basically make, um, it's called the round world version, where the world was always, um, sphere and sun and moon always existed. And um, yeah, he, he had to basically abandon it because uh, Christopher Tolkien described it as it was, uh, I'm not sure how he expressed him himself, but it was rooted too deep in his text and stories that um, they would not be able to, how did he phrase it, um, that this surgery would have been too severe or something like this he wrote. It's, um, yeah. As long as the orcs were captured um, and corrupted elves um, way back. That is, Tolkien had very, very, like many, many ideas of um how to solve this origin orc story. One of them, as you mentioned here, is the corrupted elf um, version. The problem with this version is, um, like, the reason why it's often used is because it works with what we have best, if that makes sense. And it's referenced in the Silmarillion, and even you could argue that in the Lord of the Rings it is somewhat hinted at even though not stated explicitly, and that works. But in the very early writings, like Book of Lost Tales stuff, um, orcs came out of slime pits. Then he had the idea that orcs were transformed beasts, and then he had the idea that orcs came from, uh, like, Maiar, who took the, the form of, of an orc or something similar, and then they procreated, and then um, the orcs came out of it to be. Then we have the elf theory and the... I guess latest or final theory is that orcs were corrupted men. That was the theory Tolkien liked most. The problem with this is men were born too late in the classic um, chronology of his of his world. So we have to had to move the birth of men a couple of thousand years earlier into the past, depending on the um, depending on the the how long that is. It could also be a couple of ten thousand years back into the past. It's um, I'm not sure if, if I'm not absolutely... Well, it should be... It really should be like 20,000 years or so then. If one valiant year is 144 years. As a result, um, it is... Uh, yeah, you, you see he struggled a lot with this and just moving the, the, the starting point of humanity back a few thousand years closer to the starting point of the elves when the elves awoke um, is definitely like... A very big endeavor and a big change to his to his world and that is why it didn't work however he also said um, probably thought that the elves are such um pure and yeah powerful beings that are immortal that he did not want to use them for orcs because it would also r raise the question are orcs immortal um how powerful are orcs and so on So, yeah, that is definitely um, a reason why this whole 
this, this whole topic is such, such a complicated mess. And after his death, um, Christopher Tolkien published all these versions, so we know about them. And we know about the, the somewhat, uh, or have a little knowledge about the, the process there in the background. Sadly, as said, he could never really complete it and fulfill it and find a, satis a satisfactory uh, version of it that works perfectly with his, with his law. So that is, I guess, sadly unfortunate. <laughs> he wouldn't. He didn't want the dark to win exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a complicated topic, and try to cover as 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 good as possible. But probably at some point, I maybe have to make an orc origin video or so. It would make sense for orcs to be to be mortal. Like if you try to find out the lifespan of orcs, you can definitely come to the conclusion that they are at least that they live very long and maybe are even immortal. But that's a very complicated topic. Oh, Beatrice is here. Welcome. Nice to see you. So you're probably catching the uh, slow, slowly the end of the stream. There was like another topic. Sadly, I I tried to remember. Did I make any notes on this? Probably I forgot. No. Probably not. Nope. Did not write it out. Somebody um asked about the, the hair length and there's I'm not sure if somebody in chat um, knows it, but there's like somewhere a quote that definitely hints that especially like I think the Noldor had definitely usually longer hair. So that seems to be common. And um, yeah, Peter Jackson also for sure made the long hair look very um, popular, I would say. But I probably would have to, to look it up. Sadly, I forgot where it was written or how it was phrased. Yeah, that is true. Immortality is not a choice for the elves. That is part of their existence. Only the half elven can choose and i would argue maybe only certain half elven have the choice that's a complicated topic i guess maybe the whole idea of um half elven is very let's say not that much set into stone yeah but uh, luthien Lucian had not a choice, though. You would... Well, it was not a... That was basically her part of the deal, if that makes sense. There was also um, Tuor, who was mortal, who became an elf and became immortal, basically. But... Um, like, these are very, very special cases, though. But usually, elves can't just say, no, I want um, to not be mortal anymore. Exactly, it's a, it's like an exception, an intervention of Eru, a spe very special fate, and um, she made basically a deal to live one life again, but um, as a as a result, she would become mortal. Uh, one life again with her with her husband Beren, and so on. Curly hair. I'm not sure if that is uh, described. He had like dark hair, but I'm not sure if it's uh, described as curly. Uh, 
Uh, I saw a comment on another channel that gave a long list of Tolkien describing elves with long hair. I also saw like a post somewhere. Now for Celeborn, he is described as having long silver hair. Probably a longer list. I might, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. If if there's even a letter or something, but like I said, hair uh, hair in Tolkien's world is definitely not my not a topic I'm a specialist in. <laughs> I have to admit. Probably would have to do some research on this. Ingwet cur curling golden hair. Yeah, that that might be a, a mention. Welcome to Rivendell, Mr. Anderson. It would be really... Now maybe I should do a video on this at some point. Like I said, I never did really much research on this particular topic, so I'm a bit uh, out of ammunition here. It's so hard to find. I I can't. I I could swear there was like a really good article somewhere on this. I can't find it. But yeah, <laughs> sadly, no, I, I I could swear there was something like a, a letter or so, some mention, but I, I can't find it. It's probably a topic for, for the next stream or so. <laughs> Have to do the long hair research at some point. The only mention the letters I could find is, of course, um, about Galadriel and says um, it's a secondary name given to her in her youth in the far past because she had long hair which glistened like gold but was also shot with silver. From letter 348.
<laughs> Hair short and curling, that's for hobbits. No. I remember um, there was a drawing of Elrond at the council depicted with short curly hair that was uh, was in the fellowship book. Oh, okay. No, it's, I can't find it in the letter, so it must be somewhere else. But yeah, there are definitely mentions of multiple elves that um, have long hair. Like Gilgalad definitely had long hair. I think uh, Celeborn too. Galadriel, of course. So there are definitely, among the popular elves, there are hints at uh, long hair here and there. For example, also, um, see if I find it. Uh, also, the departure of Boromir, we can, for example, read, um, they combed his long dark hair and arrayed it upon his shoulders. So, uh, Boromir, long hair confirmed. So it's definitely, there are definitely several um, statements um, about this. Elrond, it also says his hair was dark as um, as the shadows of twilight, and upon was set a circlet of silver, his eyes were grey as a clear evening, and in them was a light like the light of stars. Something like this. And you should have long hair. <laughs> I think it's not mentioned for Elrond if he had short or long hair, to be honest. But as said, there must be a mention, If I maybe I remember this wrong though, that it was not untypical for certain groups of elves to have long hair. And it seems, that seems to be a thing. The problem is I, I simply can't find it. And the most important thing though is that elves don't have beards. Uh, who did a good Elrond, um, I reckon, the guy who played Thranduil was also good for me. They need to be a little uh, distant um, and other. Yeah, I agree. I, at the beginning it was pretty hard to get used to Elrond because I knew him as Mr. Smith from Matrix, but um, by now I can't imagine a, a different Elrond anymore, so I guess you get used to everything. Yeah, uh, do you maybe know where that quote is from? Uh, from because I also now that you say it, remember that I think the uh, a certain group of elves. I said I mean the I think it was either Noldor or the uh, Teleri. It might be the Teleri.
Uh, uh, Thranduil, though, is a really popular, um, from the Hobbit films, is a really popular um, character, I often feel like. It's, every time I put I put him into a thumbnail, um, viewers get really a lot of clicks. It's kind of fascinating. Ixthalion, Ixth oh, so hard to say, Ixthalion of the Fountain, um, uh, says he really liked uh, Hugo Reaving as Elrond, yeah. Like, I think his performance was absolutely brilliant. He, also, his pronunciation was pretty good. Like, Hugo Weaving did a pretty good uh, job there. But as I said, it was just knowing him from a very popular role of another film I really liked. It was a bit strange to um, to, to just blend that out and get into the to this immersion. I can't remember where, where I read this, like, there's too many books that, um, that, that could include this information. I mean, there is a chapter about, there are multiple, um, chapters here, like, it might be Nature of Middle-earth or something. But yeah, and, and for example, the chapter, um, Hair. Uh, it says, um, of his, his silver hair, I think it was also mentioned that it was long here somewhere. Also, it says, uh, Ingwer had curling gold, uh, curling golden hair, somebody already said. Finwer and Miriel had long dark hair. So had Feanor and all the Noldor, safe by intermarriage, which did not often take place between clans except among the chieftains, and then only after settlement in Amman. Only Finwë's second son by Indis had fair hair, so blonde hair, and this remained, that is Finarvin, and this remained generally a characteristic of his descendants, notably Finrod, uh, notably Finrod, also Galadriel, I guess. Um, Elwë and Olwë had very pale hair, almost white. Melian was dark and so was Luthien. So this is from the nature of Middle-earth from the chapter, from the text called Hair. So here, here's a mention that, um, that, that, I, that I meant with the Noldor. Because this... this I mean... It maybe just says they had dark hair, so had Feanor and all the Noldor, safe and so on. But yeah, it's 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 a very explicit statement. It's also from um, round about 1959, so after the Lord of the Rings wa was already pu was already published for a few years, Tolkien wrote this. Kind of interesting, I have to admit. But also, if I remember correctly, we have this statement about the Noldor, and then we have another one about the Teleri somewhere, as um, Ectelion um, mentioned here a moment ago. But as I said, I can't remember where the... Um, Tillery statement was written. Maybe it's from the Silmarillion or something. Notice names beginning with Finn meaning hair. That is true. And there are a lot of elf names with uh, the name Finn in it, <laughs> as you probably have noticed.
Uh, Thranduil um, is Nolo, that is true. He is a Sindar and related to the Teleri. Yeah, for example, um, the, the father name or I think Finrod's name means something like golden haired champion. <laughs> How do you show a time with timeless elves? Well, they're not 100% timeless. For example, um, if they live on Middle Earth for quite some time, you can also have like effects of looking older. For example, Kirdan, we have a fantastic artwork of Kimberly 80, which I maybe should uh, switch around as uh, should because we have lo looking at this build of Gilgalad for like half of an hour or so, um, of this beautiful artwork of uh, Kimberly 80, of course, with Kirdan. He had a beard, and we can read um, uh, we can we, we can read about them as they came to the gates. Kirdan, the shipwright, came forth to greet them. Very tall he was, and his beard was long. And he was grey and old, save that his eyes were keen as stars, and he looked at them and bowed and said, All is now ready. So, um, yeah, he is described as grey and old, even though he's an elf. So there, there are some aging effects there, and they are, like, talking um, later, I guess, developed the idea of different life cycles for elves, something like that. And in the last life cycle, when Kirdan is very old, um, they also can have a beard. Though, otherwise, they don't have beards. Uh, okay, see you uh, later, uh, Canadian Fantasy Corner. <laughs> nice that you stayed so long. We probably also end the stream any moment. <laughs> we are past three hours. That's, um, in my opinion, a decent length for a stream. And it's already pretty late here already. I'm still sad, though, that I can't remember the the quote regarding the, uh, the Teleri elves. That makes me... It's a bit unfortunate. I can't... I simply can't think of it, Chad. Where could it be? Which book? Was it in the Silmarillion? I think... Maybe I found it.
<laughs> Maybe not. No, it's in the Silmarillion, I think. Um, in the chapter of Eldamar and the Princess of Eldalie. And there it is written, there they dwelt, and if they wished, they could see the light of the trees, and could, uh, uh, could tread the golden streets of Valmar, and the crystal stairs of Tyrion upon Tuna, the green hill. But most of all, they sailed in their swift ships on the waters of the Bay of Elvenholm, or walked in the waves upon the shore, with their hair gleaming in the light beyond the hill. I could swear there was like a long hair mention here. Maybe it's an early version of this. If it is an early version of this text, though, then it would be History of Middle Earth and maybe in War of the Jewels. So we are getting close. It's not War of the Jewels. Then it's maybe Peoples of Middle Earth or Morgoth Ring. Or to walk in the waves of the shop with their long hair gleaming like foam in the light beyond the hill. There it is. It's in uh, Morgoth's ring, right? Yes. Will be really hard to find, but wouldn't net without the yeah, simply an early version of this um, of the Silmarillion text. And the Silmarillion, he removed long hair. Interestingly, I don't know why that is though. Maybe it's just this version here I have. Let me just see. Uh, luckily, I have a Silmarillion version right next to me. The physical one that might be helpful. Now, all, all I have to do is find it. What home is that? There dwelt. So the two and they sailed swift ships on the waters and then walked in the waters upon the shore with their hair gleaming. No, it seems like this little um, notion was removed. Interestingly, I don't know why though. Oh, yeah. Excelion also says it. Um, upon the waters, yeah, you know, you're also cool. You found it. We found it at almost exact the same time. Home volume 10. Yeah, there it is. Beyond the hill. Uh, what source do we use for Tolkien's letters? And um, there is like, you can buy a book and there are not all, but a lot of Tolkien's letter, letters are in it. There are even unpublished letters of Tolkien that you can also get access to, but it's not in a book, I think. I'm not sure if that's all letters, though, that exists or were in some form published. Uh, but yeah, there, there's a book, it's simply called um, The Letters of John Ronald Rule Tolkien. Pretty good one. Like, it's very interesting to, to, to see um, what's going on. It's also... Um, like every letter has a number and then you know which letter um, something is. But yeah, the idea of long hair exists in the law, kind of. You could probably say it's a stretch that every elf has to ha have long hair, but let's say it's not uncommon. And so far it seems, at least in the show from the screenshots we have seen that um, except for Gil-galad, I think all the other elves have short hair, right? We have seen uh, and a Galadriel, of course. So very curious if we might see more long-haired elves. Let's let's put it. Uh, let's say what happens if they would have a good mix and just the characters revealed so far have um, mostly short hair by some incident. I'm not sure. 
I guess hair is also somewhat easy to fix, I guess. But so now we found both statements for um, Teleri and for Noldor. And that's quite a, a large group of elves when it comes to hair length. Probably have to note, uh, write this down at some point. So, okay, chat. Um, if there aren't any important um, statements or questions here in chat, um, I would potentially end the screen. Yeah, that is true. Galadriel had the light of the um, two trees in her in her hair, and because her mother had silver hair and her um, grandmother had golden hair, and her father, of course, also had golden hair, she inherited this gold of the Vanyar and this silver hair, and it mixed in her hair a little bit, and plus the light of the two trees, and that made it very special. That's also why she is uh, named Galadriel. It's definitely special. I agree. But yeah, sorry for all the people who wrote questions or stuff in chat and I have completely overlooked it. But as said, it's really difficult to keep track of what's going on in chat. Doing the production, looking for quotes, reading chat at the same time and talking, which I also sometimes um, stop and then say nothing for <laughs> 20 seconds or so. Sorry for that. But yeah, research often takes a little bit of time. <laughs> it's funny and cute when you're talking English. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, that's a complicated one, which we might have to answer next time, John. <laughs> Um, here's the topic. Ninja is the ring of water. What is the source of the water in Galadriel's mirror? But yeah, that is too big of a topic. Probably I probably need to look into a little bit. But it seems like Galadriel has some ways of, I wouldn't say manipulating water, but there's also, at least I imagine it like water, the light of the stars in Galadriel's um, file. And probably some similar manipulation went on with, with her mirror. I think that is still also a very mythological um, and unusual device in Tolkien's world. But if you can even call it a <laughs> device. So, yeah. When are we going to get, in, get a face reveal? I don't know. <laughs> well, I was just trying to trap uh, you into staying online later than you wished. <laughs> Pardon me. No problem. So far, it's not uh, that late. But I'm very happy that so many people were here today and uh, were active in chat and so on. It was really um, a lot of fun. And uh, I enjoyed the stream a lot. I hope you also enjoyed the stream. And now all I have to do is find the credits and tell you what's coming up next on the ch on the channel. So, of course, there is uh, always the possibility if people want to support the channel, like press a like button. You can leave comments, especially under the stream VODs. Would appreciate if people um, do this because all this um, interactivity stuff helps the channel a lot. If you, I don't want to go further, there's also the possibility of the YouTube channel membership. There are like three tiers or something. Um, and so on. So yeah, you can do this. I think YouTube take like cost of course channel membership costs money. So and YouTube takes a twenty five percent share. So seventy five go to me, the rest to um, friends. Shoutouts to all the people who do this. You might see them on screen a moment or saw them on screen a, mo a moment a screen screen a moment ago. And yeah, like the highest tier people end up in the uh, credits of videos. The second like in stream or so. I don't know. Stuff like that. Um, that is definitely a possibility. Also, which might surprise some people, um, uh, I just for the sake of having one, I also created an Instagram account, which I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Curious, like, 
I mentioned that in the next video, so I'm curious for suggestions what people might want to see there, I don't know. Um, maybe, I don't know, some some fun fact of the day or something like this. It's fairly new, I'm not sure. Um, oh, I, I spelled this wrong. It's not my platform, to be honest, and maybe this way I have at least the the username blocked. <laughs> Fitting to the Twitter. Probably I wrote it wrong again. No, it works. I don't know. So far there's nothing to see there, so it's probably not worth getting there. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's so Kardashian. Probably it is, and I really don't use it. Just wanted to hint, it exists. Maybe I do something interesting there or not. I don't know. Maybe I also do absolutely nothing with it. <laughs> we will see. Jesse Singh says, uh, I want to talk about the, um, uh, the people that can turn to stone statues that are the, um, that are the, um, the, the Druidine. Also very interesting uh, topic, but uh, definitely a topic for <laughs> another stream. Um, what, is, what else? So there's that. I also want to always hint at my other channels, like I have a gaming related YouTube channel where my gaming stuff will be posted, though I struggle currently finding the time to produce gaming stuff. Um, there's also a German channel where I only have one video up um, by now. I probably add another one next month or so. We will see. Definitely struggle um, translating videos to Germ in German uh, into German as well. There's Twitch, of course. You know, all the uh, good stuff. So a lot of other projects are running on. If you're interested in any of that, feel free to um, check stuff out. Links are somewhere in the description or wherever. And yeah, that is uh, basically it, I think. Did I mention everything? Yeah, I think I did mention everything. Next video, if it depends on how long it takes to edit the rest of it, I might be done tomorrow. If not, I will be done Saturday, so either tomorrow or Saturday a new law video comes out on my channel. It's in the next part of the Who is Elrond video, of course. And uh, yeah, something like uh, this. That was something I forgot, I think. Channel, view, membership stuff, I don't know. We will um, talk about this then next time. If the trailer should drop for this show, I definitely will make a live stream um, when it drops and maybe even make a video after that. So this might delay things, uh, delay things a little bit. I don't know though when it comes out. I, I'm basically refreshing um, the Twitter account of the show every time, every day, five times or so, and hope I don't miss it. But yeah, also I have a Twitter account, so. Some people don't get notified if they're subscribed to the YouTube channel and I upload something or go live. I always post my stuff. I try to post on uh, Twitter or Discord. So there's also that thing where you can follow. <laughs> you forgot your phone number. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just uh, you know, these days you have like a lot of social media stuff and I don't know, just wanted that that people know there is stuff as a reminder. So thank you people for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. It was quite a bit of fun. It was much longer as always than I expected. And um, we discussed quite a bit. We looked a bit into language stuff, which is always fun. Shout outs to all the people here in chat and for uh, support in any way, um, be it likes or comments or whatever. And uh, <laughs> see you people um, next time. Goodbye.